So welcome back all of you to the next day session here. And Nana here and then we are into the next day's program on this uh, PTP process actually and fusion. So we are completing the setups of uh, enterprise and then uh, uh, we have even completed the setups for the procurement. Uh, the next setup, you know, going ahead on the next setup actually. <clears throat> now here I am now bypassing requisition because it is not coming in the PTP lifecycle actually. I am not doing it now. So now what I do is I will now go and then create a supplier directly. Supplier creation I am going to do it now. So let us now go ahead and then create a supplier. Fine. So we have now done the item creation. My item creation is now completed. Now we will now go ahead and then create a supplier. Click on. So let us now go ahead and then create a supplier. So I will now take copy it. I will now put this one. Let us now create a supplier. I will now take copy it and then I will now place this on the customer. Mozilla browser because what I'm is not exactly working properly actually. So let us now take the Mozilla browser. So the Mozilla browser is uh, most stable actually, and so what I'm is I'm now going over there and then I'm going to demonstrate everything over there now. I'm going to click on paste it now. So let me log in with my user now. My username is what? G01. Go there. So it's G01 underscore EMP. And then the password is welcome to one, two, three, all in small zoom. Click on signing. So I'm going to save it also. So let it go and say, fine, I'm not going over there. Save it. So let us now proceed in creating the supplier actually. Fine. Today's activity is now going to begin with the supply creation. Fine, go there. So I will now go to the procurement now. <coughs> procurement is here now. Fine, click on it now. I have already minimized all the icons actually. If you go there, go to the springboard icon. And then whatever is not required, the sales is not required, the service is not required. Likewise, what happens? I have removed all the icons. So whatever is required was only kept over here on the springboard, actually. That's why you're seeing minimal icons now. <coughs> what you can do is you can ask your end customer to whatever is customize his springboard now. So whichever way he wants, let him customize the springboard. Fine, go there, click on it. And then here, what happens? I go to the suppliers method. Click on suppliers. And remember, suppliers can be created only by a, what happens a legal employee. A legal employee means what? If an employee is having a LEBU association, is called a legal employee. So only those employees can create a supplier site actually. Whereas suppliers can be created by anyone. Even if you create a user from a system bin, what happens if you can very well create a supplier. Whereas supplier site can be created only by a legal employee. And that too, he must be a procurement agent also. So the legal employee must be a procurement agent also. Then only what happens, you can create a supplier site. Right, go there, click on it. So let me go on and create a supplier. Click on create supplier. So I'm not going to get my first supplier over here now. So the supplier name is what? It is a G01 underscore sub. So I'm not creating it. Now. So the business relationship is I'm making it as a split authorized. So the tax operation is what I'm not making it as what? Some corporation or something. You're not a lot of things on this now. And then the tax category, the other things are not mandatory. Over here now. The dense number, everything is not mandatory. So click on create by which whatever the supply creation process is now triggered actually. So we are now going to go ahead and then create the supplier actually. The other room people, are you able to hear me? Those who are sitting outside? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Yeah. Now it has come to the main region. What happens? You give the alternate name if you have if you have a supplier type, what type of a supplier he is now? Fine. He may be a contractor, he may be a subcontractor, he may be a what happens, a specific supplier. So this is not going to have any effort. It is only for information purposes, basically. And if he's having a parent supplier, also what happens? You can specify it over here now. Fine, that's it. And then go down. And then in this place, what happens? You can even put the organization alias name. And then the, what happens? The register ID and then number of employees and then uh, what is the what about mission statement? Mission statement, everything you can now put it on the year of establishment, all those things. So they're all important only for what happens information purposes and then what is uh, how much of a strength he has as far as the financial standing is concerned. So the, it will now give the general indication of the supplier. Now go to the business qualification. This qualification, what happens? We can even say he's a woman who is uh, a, a minority owned or whatever. There are so many things that are there. We can even add it. And then what type of a middle he's supplying it, you can just put it over there. Right? And then afterwards, you go to the products and services. What are the products he's selling? He may be selling a computer product. He may be selling a, what happens, a, a, a router product, or he may be selling what happens, a, a mobile product. So whatever you're selling, you can just add it. Again, it's only for information purposes now. 
and then transaction taxes you know income taxes you know as from us from one of us from one of us thing and then afterwards they click on the payment and then make one of the payment as a default payment and go to the payment and then click on this here or whatever they go there i will not make one of the payment as a default payment so let us now make as a check as a default payment of another so sell the check and then click on it this will not default on to your invoices basically and then your whatever you are creating it actually this is fine so the general tab region activity is not completed fine click on save Then afterwards, what happens? You go on and create an address. Go to the address tab region. So in the address tab region, so in the address tab region, what happens? You go there. You click on the plus now. Fine over. Click on the plus. And then here, I have the address now. Fine over. So one second, I will not stop. हेलो यह टर्न भी जानकी वन सेकेंड वन सेकेंड सो नाउ आई एम स्टार्टिंग द रिकॉर्ड नाउ ओके गो द शेयर नाउ नाउ यू गिव द एड्रेस नाउ फाइन गो दैट इट्स अ जी जीरो वन केडीडीआर वन द कंट्री आई विल नोट इट्स यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स द कंट्री क्लिक ऑन इट and i click on okay now the is what it is a g01 fine address one and then can fill up the main series ha ha oh united states is not selected ha okay uh, united states <clears throat> and click on search now and then you choose it and then click on okay now fine by which it's not getting so 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 And then address line is what I will not say G zero one point eight PR line one. No, the remaining I am not giving it. No, no, no. So I will not give that. What's called the pin code one zero zero two zero. Then give a tap. So the pin code will be picking up a lot of things on this. No, no, no. I will not make it a new app, new app, new app. No, no. Click on it. That will not pop up the city, state, and county as such. No, no, no. That's it. So the address is not done. So I am now enabling the ordering. That means what this site, this address is eligible for making a purchase order. If you click on the remit to, what happens? We can very well make an invoice on this site. Actually, fine. Do not tick this. If you tick this, what happens? We can make only RFQs and quotes, and then we cannot do ordering and remit. And actually, this supersedes this to tick mark. Actually, it is a bug. Actually, the same bug which is there in e in eBus, they have done a e edition copy, and then they have put the same thing over here also. Even if you don't do it, it gets disabled. That is how it works. <laughs> Fine. So don't do it now. Fine. This is a mistake actually. Fine. Uh, so if you put it, these two has to go away. They have not done it actually. And then if you tick these two, or if you some quotes are very much possible also. Without this, what happens? It is very much possible. Fine. Go there. If you put it, this is only possible. That is what it means. Now. Fine. Go there. Remember it now. Fine. Go there. So go there and do it now. Fine. Go there. So this is what. And then after having completed it, what happens? You give a save now. The address gets saved now. <clears throat> the address is saved. And go there. What else? So address is saved. Then afterwards, what happens? If you have any transactional taxes on this one, you can use. And if you have a contact person, go to the contact person. And then here in the contact person, contact person is yet to be created and not putting it down. Fine. Go to the payment terms. And then if you have any payment terms, what happens? Again, I'll make a check as a default. In eBay, it defaults from the site level to every level, but here it's not. So you must save and then save and close. By which what happens? The address is not created. So we have created address. So likewise, what happens? Create that many addresses, whatever you want to create and then create it now. Afterwards, what happens? You go to the contacts now and click on the contacts. And then we are going to get a contact now. Click on plus, and then let us now create a contact for this particular supplier. How many contacts are available here? So I will now put different contacts contacts for the supplier now. So click on the plus, and then the contact page will open now. And then the contact has to reside on a place now. I will now put my name over here now. Ananta, <clears throat> and then the last name is Nana. I am now the manager of this now. Man, I will always supply. I go there. I go there. My phone number, maximum everything I can give it. Now I go there. And then I will now associate this contact is sitting in which address I am going to say. Now I you go to actions and then go to self net. And then since we have only one address on this, now I select it and then click on apply and then open. So by which order it gets created? So this contact Ananta Nana is now sitting on this address actually. So likewise, what happens? We'll be having multiple contacts sitting in multiple different different addresses. So create everything. Is it clear? Fine. Go and save and close. Now you cannot create a site at all. If you try to create a site, what happens? It will not allow you at all. So site creation is not possible because he is not a procurement agent. So the legal employee must be a procurement agent. Then only what happens? The site creation is basically possible. So if you go to the site, you will not find the plus tick mark at all. I will not go to the site. Click on the site. If you go there, the plus tick mark will not be coming. 
So we will not make him as a procurement agent. Fine, go there. Right click on the duplicate it now. And then here, whatever I am going to make it as a procurement agent. So this is a task actually. Fine, go there. Uh, you go to the manage procurement agent task now. Fine, click on set up and maintenance. And then I am going to go for the task now. So through which what happens? I am going to make him as a procurement agent now. <clears throat> go there. Click on it. And then you go to the set up and go to the search now. Fine. Manage procurement agent is the one. So it's a managed percentage, proc percentage, the agent percentage. Fine, go there. Entering. So we are now making it as a procurement agent. Fine, go there. Managed procurement agent. Fine, go there. So this is equivalent to buyer of EBS now. In the EBS we have a buyer. Fine, click on plus. I am not going to make it as a procurement agent now. So the procurement BU. What happens if you go there? I will not put my BU. G zero one now. G zero one business unit. Fine, go there. And then what happens? You'll be having a Requisitioning BU also. This is called a client BU. You can go there, drop it down. So it is already the relationship is established, not coming. I go there. The agent name is last name, comma first name. It is EMP one, comma space. It is G zero one. So EMP one PS is coming now. I go there. Ah, uh, why my name is not coming? Is EMP one only now? Nah? Oh God, G just G0. come on. Yeah, G zero one. Sorry. Is coming. So I have not made EMP one actually. I don't know it is only EMP actually. So G zero one underscore EMP. Last name comma first name is coming. Fine, go there. And then here, what happens? Access to other agents' documents. You always make it as full. So anybody can view yours now, and then take any action on this now. So make it as full now. Fine. So that is the best method now. Fine, go there. Manage purchase agreements full, and then go there. Drop it down, and then here, what happens? This is also full now. Fine, go there. Down, and then make it as full. Click on it, and then there is one supplier qualification also. Fine. Provide full visibility to all other agents, basically. Fine. So that way we are doing it now. Fine, go there. So click on seven close by which what happens? Sir? We are now completed the procurement agent task. Now we can very well create what happens the supply side. Fine, go there. Now you go there. Close the space. Now why plus is not coming? Anybody? Yeah, no. Huh? I am a procurement agent. Just know only. Yeah, huh? Not refresh is hundred percent correct. This motor man is very correct now. Fine, you can cancel. <coughs> And then what happens? You go there. We have to requery. We have to requery. So click on done. And then come on up now. So we'll now go there. We'll now requery this one. And then go there. I will now go to this place. And then we'll now requery. So refresh. It's okay, man. Uh, where is that here? Yeah. I'll now go find out. Uh, what happens? There will be one. Uh, one. Uh, what happens? One screen will be there now. Hmm. I don't know where that screen is now. Man, it's not coming over here now. <clears throat> Yet the the request is already there now. Fine, there's a different thing now. Fine. So what I do is I will now click on it, and then I will now go again to the supplier. So click on the procurement, and then here what happens? I go to the supplier now. Fine, click on supplier, and then here you go there. <coughs> what is this? Fine, click on this one. Yeah, here it is there. Fine, go there. Click on the manage suppliers. Fine, go there. You go to the task list now. Fine, there's a task for us. Fine, click on it, and then here we'll now go to the manage suppliers task. Mm, click on it. It's not happening. Come on. Yeah. Now it's coming. Go to the manage suppliers now. I click on the manage suppliers. Internet speed is good. I think site is giving a problem. I think probably. Huh? Site is giving a problem. So go to the manage suppliers and then here what happens? I'm now going to what happens? Manage the suppliers now. <clears throat> site is having a problem. Click on it now. Go there. So here I will now put G zero one, and then click on search now. So select it and then click on edit now. This time what happens? We will be in a position to create a site now. Go to the site. The plus mark will be coming now. Vandichi, we got it. So click on the plus, and then here what happens? I am now going to create the first site now. The site I am going to create now. Go there. So you drop down the address. The address is there. So the moment you select the address, the address will be copied to the site. I can overwrite the site name. Site one. And then these tab regions will be enabled only when you save now. I click on save now. We'll be coming to it during a P2P push. So once when you perform a push into the payables, so what happens? These tab regions will be useful now. As a point, not telling anything. So I'll get down by that. So this much is coming. What happens? You go to the invoicing area. Here, what happens? You say the invoice currency as well as the payment currency. And go there. Click on it, drop it down. And then use dollars. And then here, what happens? You go to the payment currency. Is <coughs> used dollars. And then afterwards, the site assignment is equivalent to multi-org access control of EBS. Now, fine, go to the site assignments, and then here you can provide. So at least one site must be there. Fine, go there. Click on Add. Now. And then you'll be having only one access to one BU actually. Fine, that BU will be coming up automatically once when you drop it. 
So if you make him as a procurement agent for multiple BUs, what happens? He will be able to do it now. Since he is a procurement agent only for one BU, that's coming up. Oh, yeah, not coming. Shift to location is what? G01. And then give a tab now. I don't know. Use lock. And then similarly, the built location, find over G01. And then lock. And remember, the locations and orgs are tied. So naturally, what happens when you put the location, the org for which what happens, you're going to make a purchase will be coming automatically over there. And that's it. Fine. The supplier creation is not complete. Is it clear on that? Click on save and close. So we are not completing the supply creation. So the site is also created. Save and close, and then we are completed. So this supplier is not very much eligible for placing it on a purchase order. And then here, what happens? There is a submit button. Whenever you have a submit button, always you have to submit it. Right? I'm not submitting it. So by which what happens? The supplier gets the discount over time. The changes have been saved. Now, let us now go to the purchase orders now. So before which what happens if you go and then have a look at it now? Let us now have a look at one more thing now. I don't know. See a P2P process. So we have a document on a P2P process, how accounting is going to take place, we are going to discuss now. We will not discuss about how the accounting takes place now. In the procurement, we have in the top P2P process opening. So in a financial accounting, what happens is whenever you make any inventory transactions, the inventory valuation has to be set now. Otherwise, what happens? It will not be allowing you. So first of all, we will not see that inventory valuation account. So inventory valuation account has to be set now. We will not come to this file a bit later now. So let us go there and then we will not try to make what one miscellaneous receipt for us. So go there and then click on it. You know that. And now what happens? I don't know how many of uh, data access have been given. I might have given. I will not make a check of it. Click on it. So let us now go to the inventory now. So let us now go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory. Inventory. So here what happens? I am not going to make a miscellaneous receipt. To receive any item in the inventory, what happens? The inventory valuation account has to be set now. Click on it now. What happens in the long run? Click on create miscellaneous transaction. So I am not trying to create a miscellaneous transaction and then it will not allow you at all because what happens? The inventory valuation account is not set. Fine. Drop it off and then I am going to make a miscellaneous reserve. Miscellaneous reserve I am making it now. So in the account, what happens? I will not try to go there and then make a search of it. I click on search now. You will not find any account already. Over. Why my mistake is not coming? It is all 001. So organization is a 001. So let me change the organization first of all. Fine. Give a cancel now. So let me change the organization now. So organization to what? G01 is the organization which for which I'm going to make it now. Go there. So click on it. And then here, when you go to the manage item quantities, the change organization button will be coming now. And there you go there. And then change the organization to my current working organization, which is G01. So I'm going to make a change now. Click on it. So the first organization will be showing. Click on change organization now. Here, what I'm going to see the organization is what? Is it G01? <clears throat> and then click on OK now. So it's not done. I go there. So, uh, G011, G011, G010 is the master, G011 is a child of mine, is not done, and go there. You click on create miscellaneous transaction. So, G011 is the one, and go there. Drop it now, and then make it as a miscellaneous receipt now, and go there. Make it a miscellaneous receipt. And then here in the account, what happens if you drop down? You'll be having a three segmental one, fine. Company, department, and thing. And then here, what happens? You won't find anything at all, fine. You'll not be able to do it now, and go there. Click on it. I will not choose the 10 over here now, fine. Here, I will not choose 100. <clears throat> And then uh, here, what happens? I will not choose the asset account of 1000. 1000 is asset, 1001 is expense, and then 1000, uh, 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 no, 1001 is liability, and then 1002 is expense, and then 1001 is liability. 1002 is liability, okay. 1001 is expense, okay. Fine. Good, good, good. Fine. You're remembering it. Fine. So 1000, 1001 is expense, 1002 is liability. Fine. Click on okay now. Fine. It will not accept the file. Because what happens? The, Accounting has to be set now. Fine. Whenever you perform any transactions, what happens? It will be hitting the inventory account. So there, what happens? The material, the material, the inventory valuation account has to be set on your what happens on your subledger accounting. Right? On the subledger accounting that is set up now. Right? Click on OK now. Right? That is not set. That's why it's not coming. So let us go there and set up this now. Right? Click on cancel now. So we are going to set up subledger accounting on this now. Right? Click on it. So here I will now go to what? I will now go to my functional setup manager. Go to the setup and maintenance. And then here, what happens? I'll be going to the functional setup manager. This is the functional setup manager. Here, what happens? I go to that. What happens? Manufacturing and supply chain management. Right? This is a module which is required for setting up your subledger accounting and go to the manage subledger accounting. So here, what happens? You go there, go to the task of what? Manage mapping set. Map percentage set percentage. So manage mapping set is a task name for which what happens? You go for the cost accounting. The cost accounting is the one. So choose the manage mapping set against the cost accounting. Choose the manage mapping set against the cost accounting. And then the scope has to be selected again. Even though we selected it, the scope has not got selected. 
So against the manage map itself, what happens? I click on the select scope and then choose the cost management node and go there. Click on it, self net, and then click on apply and go to task. And then here, what happens? I'm going to select the cost component. Choose the cost accounting, cost management. And select it and then click on save and close by which what happens? The manage map itself will open up. So here, there are plenty of accounts which you people have to set now. And against the financial activity, each and every account has to be set now. In EVIS, it is not so. They are all pointers in EVIS. You pick up the material account from the organization parameter. That is what EBIS says. Whereas here, in inventory, there is no accounting at all. In supply chain management, we are not providing any accounting. And so what happens? In the SLA area, we have to specify all these accounts manually. And there is a big headache actually. A big headache. So people, the financial team will now sit and then see, see, set each and every account. So the bare minimum account to start with as far as inventory transactions is what? The inventory valuation. Search for it. I will not go for inventory valuation. INV. Inventory, B A L U, and then what happens? I make a search. I will put inventory on I N B only, and then make a search. You will be finding the inventory valuation account. Inventory valuation account. I am going to set. This is a bare minimum. I go there. Click on the inventory valuation account. We have to set up almost every account actually for making a transaction. But for this training, we are not setting up each and everything. And then add your chart of accounts over here. Go there. Click on plus, and then I am going to add the chart of accounts now. I click on it, and then I will be adding it on. And drop it on. I will not choose the G zero one. G G. This is the one. How come two are there? Anybody is using my number? Oh, okay. there is a there is a zero to one. So once when this is done, what happens? It comes over again. My G zero one accounting instance is not coming. For which what happens? I'm going to set up. And remember, the accounting can be done for four variants actually. One for inventory or one for sub inventory, and then uh, one for what happens? Your category and then one item number. For all the four variants put together, we can have a different different charge account. So it's a very huge one now actually. So if the end customer wants to track his inventory valuation account on four different variables, we can very well set it. So for every or for every sub inventory, for every category, and then every item number, we can have what happens a separate charge account. So here, what happens? I will not give a plus one. It's not done. So here, what I'm going to do is I will not give a set as a default. So here, what happens? Everywhere will becoming a star 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 star. Set as a default is not done now. So it will all be coming as a star, 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 star. What happened? Set as a default has been kept over. I think it's not taking a long time now. Otherwise, I will not minimize this now. Screen. See the screen. It's not coming over here. Now. Set as a default. It's not done actually. Uh, this line has to come now. It's not coming as a default. It's taking a long time. So let me cancel and then again. Or otherwise, give a save now and then see whether it will be getting saved or not. This is now saved actually, my last save. And then what happened? This area is not coming now. I will again give a plus now, and click on plus now. And then here, what happens? I will now set as a default now. When you set it all, oh God, it is not coming. Not coming. It has to set as a default actually. Give a cancel now. Click on okay now. Inventory valuation is not going on. So keep my cursor on the second one, G01 accounting instance. And then here, you have plus now. No adding on my entry. And then I keep my cursor over here and then click on set default. Oh, oh. Not working now. Right? So what I do is I will now use my organization, inventory organization is what? Mine is what? G011. What does? And then I will now manually set it. So if you give a set as a default, what happens? 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone. Uh, thousand. I will put some amount and then what I will give a save now. So I will see if it is getting saved or not. So I give it a manual number. After saving it, what happens? I will now set as a default now. Go there. Go there. Keep my cursor over here and click on set as a default. Go there. Click on. Bandichi. We got it. So we have to get all the stars over here. I not got it. And go there. So that means what? For all of them, I am having only one common account actually. That what, right? Whatever may be the variant, doesn't matter. Right? So many companies will be operating it. But otherwise, what happens? Some companies will be having different different accounts for different. Only for inventory, G013, right? they'll be having one thing. And then G013 for a sub inventory will be having some other thing. Right? For various combinations, they'll be having it. Was it clear now? Fine. Any doubts on this now? So click on save and close by which what happens? We have now completed the inventory valuation account. Now we go there and then what is this one? What happens? We go there in this place. What happens? We, we are in the manage mapping set. So what happens? It's also manage mapping set. So right click on them, what happens? We'll now duplicate this one. So let us now go there and then try to make a miscellaneous transaction. This time, what happens? They can very well cooperate. So go there. I will now, what happens? You go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory now. Go to the inventory. 
So you go to the inventory management, and then here, what happens? I'm going to make a miscellaneous receipt for this now. Click on it, and then we're going to make a miscellaneous receipt. Click on create miscellaneous receipt. Ensure that your organization is coming on the top line over there. Drop it down. Go there. Miscellaneous receipt. Miscellaneous receipt. Go there. Miscellaneous receipt. And then in the account, what happens if you go there? And then if you click on search, this is basically what happens. A contra account. Now all the accounts are coming. So here, this is known as an offset account. Now. This is known as an offset account. So now what happens? I will now create what? So 1002, 1001 is not coming. 1001 is what? That may be liability in the year. 1001 is expense. But why? Uh, only liability will not be coming over here. I'm not sure about it. You know, go on and make a check of it. So I will now choose 1002 now fine because it's not coming. Thank you so much. 1002 is not given. You go down and then here, what happens? Use the current item process. Yes, now I'm going to go there. I will now add the item. So click on plus and then I'm not going to add the item. So let me, let me receive a stock. On click on plus. So click, click on plus and then I'm going to add the item on the transaction line for that. Is what? It's a G01 and then give a tap. So we have only one item. The purchase sale item will be coming up over here automatically. The purchase sale item will be coming. So that item I'm going to receive it. Now. It's not coming. Drop down. I will not choose what FGS is the one point. Go there. Click on search. Have we created any sub inventory here now? I think I have not created sub inventory. So let us now go there and then get a sub inventory also. Fine. Go there. So right click on the duplicate the tab. So since we are not created a sub inventory, it is not coming. So let us go there and then get a sub inventory. Now fine. Go there. So click on it and then we'll not create a sub inventory. Go there and then click on what happens. Set up and maintenance. <clears throat> go there and then here click on search now. And then you go there, go to the manage sub percentage, local percentage. So we will now create two sub inventories one FGS, one finished goods trace, and then one is stores. Now, go there. So, organization is G011. Here, what happens? I will now give a plus now. And then here, I will now say it's a G01 FGS. Finished goods stores, I'm grading it now. And go there. Take a copy of it now. So, a sub inventory is nothing but a physical container of material actually. We have to have at least one sub inventory there. Make the locator control fine. None is okay. The location, what happens if you give a G01 and then give a tab? Automatically, the location will default because we have already tied the location to R now. Fine. That's what it is. So give the location over here. Give a save and close. So we have one FGS over here now. Let us now create one more sub inventory called stage. I'm now going to create one more sub inventory called stage now. So one when that is created, what happens? It becomes eligible for transaction actually. So the first sub inventory is under creation. Fine. We're not done. Fine. Go there. So click on plus and then let us now create the second sub inventory. So it's what is a G01 underscore stage. So I'm now making on stage area. We'll be discussing about it in, uh, while we are doing the what's called the order management activity and go there. So location, I'm going to put it in my Location is uh, somewhat a mandatory one. So give the location where exactly the sub inventory is running. So FGS and stage are created. Fine, click on done now. Click on done by which what happens, the activity is now completed. Now you go to the previous screen and then here whatever you drop down, both the sub inventories will be getting listed up. FGS and then let us now have what? 1001. I'm not going to have it and then click on submit by which what happens, the transaction gets completed. And then it will be going into the inventory now. I click on submit now. So for performing any transaction, what happens? You need what? <coughs> yeah, inventory valuation and more So once when that is done, what happens? It will now allow you to what happens to perform a transaction. We are now complete a miscellaneous transaction. So and now we'll now go there and then have a look at the stock now. So the stock will show you about how much of uh, metal is there in this place now. Mm -hmm. So 1001 is the stock which I learned. And then this is the offset account. And then what is the material valuation account is 1000. Right? So yeah, yeah, financial transactions will be getting done on this. And remember, no accounting takes place upon SCM transactions. We have to push them into costing for making a transaction. Fine. What is the manager item? Item one is. And then here you go there. I will now populate my item over here. Fine. The item will be coming. And then click on search. You'll be getting it. Fine. Click on it. Fine. You'll be getting a search. And then once when you search it, what happens? It will not show you the quantity. The stock will be coming up over here. Fine. Go there. It's not showing a stock. When expired, it it will not show you in which org it is now. Fine. Go there. Fine. Go there. It will not show you the org. And then afterwards, what happens? It will not show you the sub inventory. So it's still expanded. It will not show you in which sub inventory we have material actually. It will not show you in which sub inventory. This completes the miscellaneous transaction. The financial accounting is now set. Now, the purchasing accounting has to be set. So, if you don't set up the purchasing accounting, what happens? I cannot do it. I click on done now. Now, let us now create a purchase order. So, click on it now. I'll now click on the home page. 
and then I go to the purchasing, and I go to the procurement, and then here, what happens? I go to the purchase orders. I am not going to go to the purchase orders now. So here, I will now create an order now. If I click on it, and then let me create an order. Create order, I am going to create. Now. I click on create order. I am going to get a purchase order. And since he has been made as a procurement agent, he can very well do it now. Fine, go there. He can now see the procurement BU as well as the requisition BU. Had he been made as a procurement agent for multiple BUs, it will now give you a list of areas now. Since he is only for one, what happens? Not showing you. Now, what happens? I put my supplier over here now. G01. Click on it now. It will now put the supplier site as well as the supplier contact now. The remaining are all okay. So click, click on create. I'm not going to get a purchase order. So the purchase order is now under creation actually. Supply, purchase orders under creation. So in the header level, everything is now mentioned over here. Fine. Okay, go down. And then the bottom, what happens? Go down. And then C on this place. Fine. You can now see the ship to location. Fine. Is G01. It is defaulting from what? The suppliers. Uh, what happens? The ship default ship to location. In the supplier, we are given the default ship to location is what? This one. So that is getting default over here. Fine. Go there. Let me add the line. Click on this. So once when you add the line, what happens? You can go there. I will not put the item over here now. Fine. G01 and then give a damn. So item is getting populated with the purchase order now. The item has got a category, everything is not coming fine. Go there. I will not put a quantity of what? That is a one not one. And then give a damn. So having given this, what happens? You can now see this now. Fine. You go to the schedules. If I click on the schedules. So now in the schedules, what happens? If you go there, the org is grayed out. So what happens? Org is like a first wife. So there is not much of an importance. The location is like a second wife. It has got all the importance. So I go there and then make a change. You can see the org getting changed. Now. Go there, click on it now, right? So I will now change it to zero and then give a tab now. You can now see the org getting changed. Even though we buy only for the org, what happens? Org is not that much of an important one. Actually. So it's not changing. I think since it has already defaulted, it's not working as a well. Otherwise, what happens? We buy only for a location actually and not for the org. Actually. So the default ship to location is not coming. Fine, go there. Not okay. So the org is grayed out. Fine, those orders. And then here you go to the schedule. And then here what happens? You go further. The requested date or the promised date. One of them is a mandatory field. Now, fine, go there. Click on it. Drop it down. And then we are going to give it now. Fine, I will not say I want it today. It's a indicator. No bother. Fine, I want it. Right? So I am putting the requested date over here now. And one of the date is a mandatory. The requested date is a date given by the requester. The delivery date, the promised date is given by the supplier. So we have to populate at least one. And doesn't matter that what happens, it has to, it has to meet this now. Right? If it doesn't supply by these two dates, what happens, we will only go on and shout, hey, hey, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Right? But there is no such stoppage of any result. You can even still receive even beyond the dates. Right? Now go there. And then we will now go to the distribution. Right? Click on the distributions now. So we go to the distributions and then here, what happens, we go there and then edit the line. Now you can see, it needs four account, three accounts actually. We will now go there and see. It needs three accounts. So the PO charge account, the variance account, and the accrual account are there. Fine. Nothing is set as such. Now. Fine. Okay, now I go there. I have no setting it. So I will now give a save. Fine. Click on save. I will now validate this purchase order, which is now starting on 3000. Now, fine. So 1000 is a requisition start number. 2000 is a uh, what happens? Your purchase uh, contract purchase agreement start number. And then what happens? The 3000 is a purchase order. Here itself, it is now saying, fine. This account is missing. That account is missing. So many accounts are missing. So the account PO account, uh, the PO charge account is missing actually. So let us now provide the charge account and then again go there and see. No, right? We go to the manage mapping set now. In this place, let me go and then see the material, material account. Right? Material account is nothing but a charge account actually. Right? Material account is a charge account. So material account organization I'm going to enter. Right? Material account is a charge account, PO charge account. Right? Go there, click on it now. And there are so many variants to it, right? but I'm not telling you everything over there. Right? Click on plus now and then let us know. Insert our chart of accounts over there. Now. Fine. Drop it down. And then make it as G. G01 accounting instance. Fine. Go there. Go there. For which what happens? Let me provide the charge account. Click on plus now. Fine. Go there. Fine. So I'm going to put the charge account over there. So here what happens? The account is now there. Fine. Set as a default. Let us say that it works or not. Oh God, it's not working. So we have to give something and then afterwards only set as a default. Fine. The organization what? G011. And then here what happens? We go there. It is a 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone. Since we don't have much of accounts, what happens? I'm doing it now. I set a default fine for that. Patia, patia, it's working. So, if you put an account and afterwards put a set of default, it's not working. Fine. Some ulta see the activity karma by other. Fine, go there. It's not done. Fine, go there and save and close. So, by which what happens? Sir? We are now given the charge account. Fine, go there, save and close. Now, we go to the screen and then again, what happens? We validate it. You go to the purchase order document now. Fine, go there. So, procurement agent is okay. Fine, it is purchasing now. 
Now, if you go there, go to actions and then validate the charge account. It was giving error. Now, I'm going to validate. We'll not have a look at it. Now, I'm going to this time, whatever, whatever, we'll not see what account. So, here again, what happens? What you have to do is, first of all, afterwards, you save it and then build the account actually. You go there. Now, it's now giving these errors actually. If I go there, you have to build the account first of all. So, here, what happens? You go down. You keep your distribution and then edit it now. Now, since we are given a charge account, what happens is already come. So, if it is not come, what you have to do is you go to actions and then go to build accounts, rebuild accounts. By validation itself, the rebuild account has happened. So, what happens? You don't now, let us go there and then provide the accrual account. Accrual account you're going to provide. The accrual account I'm going to set up. So, it's what? Accrual. accrual. You go there and then accrual. I'm going to make a search for it. Click on search now. Click on search. So accrual account organization level, I'm setting it up. I'm going to click on it now. And then I'll give a plus now. Accrual account, I'm going to set it. Drop it down and then make it as a G. G. For, us, for the G01, you cannot see the message is coming. Can you go there? And then click on plus now. And then here, I will now put the organization name as what? G011. And then I will now put the accrual. Fine. 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone. Uh, here, accrual is basically a liability account. Now, I'm going to go there. You know, see which account is basically coming. This the liability account. Here, all the accounts are coming. Hey, anybody who is very sure about which is the liability? 1002, na? That is what I feel. I also feel 1002. Click on OK. And then let's set it as a default. Now, I'm going to set it as a default. Now, coming and go there and save. So the accrual account is now set now. Save and close, it is now set. Let us now go there, go to the purchase order, so you need purchase order one go there. Now this time what happens? You go there. And then I am already in the space distribution and then click on edit now. So once when you validate what happens, the account will be populated. Or otherwise, you go to actions and then go to rebuild the accounts. I'm rebuilding the accounts. This is not come. So this is the only thing which is now missing. Now find that come. I click on OK and then again validate now. Click on validate. So actions validate, it will not show you only one problem. Variance is only not there. The remaining are all already there now. So it will not show the variance. Okay, only a small putty error is coming. That is on the variance section. Click on OK now. Fine. It'll now go there and the variance now. Fine, go there. So it's an invoice price variance actually. It's an invoice price variance. Invoice and then give enter now. And then go on the way. Invoice price variance. So invoice price variance account I'm going to set now. Fine. This will be normally an expense account actually. So click on plus and then I will not put my what happens the chart of accounts now. Drop it down. G. G G. Come on. Go there. So it's coming out. I go there. In the space, what happens? Go there. Click on plus now. I will not put the 1001 expense account over here. 011. And then go there. Click on it. 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone. What happens? 1001. And then set as a default. So that what happens? It will be common for all the offs. Now go there. Click on it. Sir. So click on save and close. Now by this time, what happens? Everything is now set fine. Go there, click on edit now. And then here again, what happens? You go there and then rebuild the accounts. Go there, click on distribution. Again, go there. What happens? This account has to come now. The variance account has to come. Go to actions and then go to rebuild now. Fine, go there. Everything is now done. So click on OK. Now we go and then what happens? Validate. Now you go to save fine. Go there. Click on actions and then go to validate. So go to actions and then go to validate now. Fine. You're going to validate it now. Fine. Go there. Click on it now. Pachakala with chingicha. Fine. If there is no errors on it, and that's all. So it's not ready for submission of approval. So we'll not go for a cup of coffee and then come back and then we'll not submit for approval. So let's begin now, fine, after the break. <clears throat> so let me go there and then share my screen. So now all the accounts have been set, okay, right? and here what happens, uh, we are not going to submit for approval actually. And we are not bought all the accounts. So if you submit for approval, what happens, uh, we have to go there and then do what one task is called manage document approvals. This is for purchase order approvals. Actually, fine, good. There, manage document approvals. So, manage purchasing document approvals is the task name. Fine, click on it now, and I'm going to set up the approvals. So, here approvals can be done by six many ways actually one by the individual worker, one is the automatic approval, and then one by what happens your approval group. And then the fourth one is a job level approval. The fifth one is a supervisor level approval. And then the sixth one is a position level approval. So automatic individual workers, approval group, job, supervisor, and then <clears throat> your position. So all these things will be explained on a full-fledged training over there. Now right? we are not going to explain that. Over there. So go there. Let us now set it up for automatic approval. So already one of them is enabled now. Right? One stage can have multiple participants actually. Here, what happened? The pre-approval, you have got four participants. The terms you have got around six. 
and then similarly the post approval has got my problem much a stage participant is a common issue click on edit rule and then i am going to set it up for automatic actually i am going to set it up for automatic approval now so click on edit rules i'll be setting it up for automatic approval so so many rules are coming up fine i will not cancel it right because i have to disable each and everything now so what i will do is i will not go there i will not set up this next serial and then have a look at it now fine next serial click on edit rules whether anything has been set up or not and nothing not much of a things are there so here what i mean the rule always applies is there this is automatic approval the second one let me disable it and let me disable it so here what i mean this is the only thing which is going to apply so that means what it will get approved automatically on this now for this training so click on save and then let me deploy it now click on save and then i'm going to deploy it so for this training what happens i'm not going to use only what an automatic approval now and the automatic approval is there at the bottom and i'm going to choose this now so once when it is deployed what happens it becomes eligible for what happens uh, using it on your saying of fine so let me disable this one it has got plenty of rules are there i'm going to disable it and then keep my cursor on the serial 2 and then enable it so only this rule will be applied so this stage participant only will be applied upon and go there click on done so by which what happens no done now let us go there and then you go to the edit purchasing button and here what happens you click on the manage approvals it will show you who is going to approve the 3000 document will be approved by whom it is going to say now it will not show you in the meantime what happens we have to set up the receiving parameter also fine manage receiving parameter so let us go there and set up the name manage percentage receiving percentage para percentage so we are going to set up the receiving parameters fine click on the manage receiving parameters for our org so it is a g011 or fine go there is one so it is already set no it is not set actually so let me wait up the mandatory fields over here fine i will make it as an and then here what happens i go there make it as an and then the receipt routing fine go there i will not make it as what standard go there and then uh, the receipt number is automatic and then here this type is numeric only and then i will not say the next start number is 1000 and go there this is for rma receipt routing is going to be standard rma stands for return material authorization so whenever the customer returns back any material what happens it will be following this road now and go there so this much is more than sufficient for this so g01 is coming click on save close and go we are given a standard receipt routing over there so this normally defaults onto the purchase order and go there now it says what the application developer has to approve it since it is automatic that means what the person who is developing this particular purchase purchase order is called the application developer he himself can very well submit it so click on submit it will be getting self approved actually So the three thousand will be getting self-approved now. And go there. So if you go there, click on it, and then go to the manage orders. Click on the manage orders, and then query for the three thousand purchase order now. The order number is three thousand, and then click on search now. Find over there. Click on search. They're going to see this now. Click on search. So it says what it is now pending approval. If you click on the hyperlink on the pending approval, it will tell you overall the has to be done now. The action is not yet performed. Find over there. It's not taking some time now. So it's going to be automatic actually. Find click on search now. So now it's open now. open means what it is now open when click on open the state is open if you click on it what happens you can now see this document over so who has all approved this document you can very well see now right here is a what happens there is only a single level approval and so what happens it is now showing in the same person as this so the po is now what happens a submit for approval we are going to receive this po and if you go on the click on the hyperlink on the po we can open up the po and then have a look at it now right click on the hyperlink on the po you can have a look at it now. so we can even go to the distributions fine right? go to the schedules and then have a look at it about the receipt routing actually so here what happens the receipt routing is getting defaulted from somewhere it is not coming from the receiving parameters because we are just now only set the receiving parameters actually so here what happens we go there and then click on this one and go there go down and then keep your cursor on the schedule now and go there whenever you want to have a look at it what happens you use this last icon on this one the details do not open open it up when you open it up it will not create a change order actually and don't do this now when click on the details icon so you can even see without opening the sales order actually you go on and have a look at it now so the receipt routing is standard as a <clears throat> so now we go on and receive it now and go there so 3000 purchase order is now done when click on done now so let us now go to the inventory and then receive it so click on the home icon and then you go to the supply chain execution now so click on the supply chain execution and then here what happens you go to the inventory straight away So go to the inventory management straight away, and then here we are going to make a reserve now. Fine, click on it now. Fine, go on that. So go there, and then here we will now drop down, and then go to the reserves now. Fine, I'm going to say this. So here, click on the receive expected shipments on this now, and then I am now going to query on the purchase order number actually. So click on the receive expected shipments, and then here what happens? I am going to query on the purchase order number now. So the purchase order number is three thousand now. Fine, three thousand. Give a tap, and then click on search now. Fine, it will now show you what is expected on this. 
Now, this is expected from supply bank account and click on receive. I'm going to make a reserve moment. So 101 quantity is now expected from the supplier. And then here, what happens in this place? We go there and then receive. Let us say supplier has supplied only 50 quantities. So those 50 quantities we are going to receive. Fine. Click on the show zip quantity. It will now show you how much is expected from the player. But in this case, what happens? He has now only supplied 50 over here now. So 50 is supplied. And then you're going to make a gate zip for this. So click on the show zip quantity. And then here, what happens? We are going to make zip only for 50 quantities actually. <clears throat> So click on the show receipt quantity to be showing you how much is expected from the supplier. And then we will now make a change of this. And then here what happens, they will go on this. So in the meantime, what happens, you go there, right click on the duplicate now. So duplicate it. So it has already come, we go there. Now you change it to 50. And then make a result. If I click on create result. So click on create result, it will now go to the next screen. This way, what happens, the shipment number is 123. The packing slip number is 456. And then the shipping method, fine, I will now say G01. And then give a tap. This is the method by which one this is the carrier is using it now, right? You can put any carrier, whatever you want, right? or whatever he has shipped on it. And number of, number of slips is what three now. And then here, what happens? The way bill number 789. And then the bill of lighting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? Likewise, what happens? You can even say, kaja kaja, kaja kaja, right? fill up each and everything. So, what happens? All these things will give a value addition for you whenever what happens? you're taking a report on a particular GR number. So on which way it has come in, and then where exactly it is, everything is there. When click on jump. So once when you submit it, what happens? The GRN number gets created. The goods receipt note number is getting created, and then it will be having all these inspections. So this is only for value addition, and then it is not mandatory fields. And so what happens if you provide everything? It will be a very useful information for the management to what happens? The track the shipments later. So 1001 is the GRN number. Fine, go there. So in this place, if you go there, and then I will now go to the inventory management, supply chain execution, and then go to the inventory management. Uh, uh, next one, right? inventory management. And then here, what happens? I will now go on and have a look at the stock. Now. Right? Click on it. I will now go to what? change it to inventory. Change it to inventory. And then we will now have a look at the stock. So, so here, manage item quantity is the one. So click on it and I will now put the item over here. I find G01 is the one. Purchase sale item actually. And go there, click on search. I will now say how much is receiving, how much is inbound basically. How many items? Now 50 items are coming to the receiving area. And then another 51 is expected. Click on research, it will not show you everything over there. I'm going to expand it and then I'll show you. So, inbound is 51 is expected from supplier. In the receiving area, we have 50, and then we already have a stock of 1001 based upon or whatever the miscellaneous receipt actually. So, in which submitted it is returning. And if you click on the inbound details, it will not show you against the 51 how many purchase orders are there. As of now, they got only one purchase order. So, it will not show you only one purchase order. Otherwise, if you have multiple purchase orders which corresponds to the total inbound, it will not show you over here. In this place, it will not show you. So we have only one purchase order, 3,000 for which order, 51 is inbound. So this is accumulation actually. Fine. This is accumulation. This will not give you detailed information on this. Now, let us go and then deliver it now. So once when you deliver it, the receiving section material will be coming into the on hand now. Let us go there and then deliver it. Click on that now. So 1001 is the GRN number, remember? And click on that. And then he click on this task carousel and then click on a put away now. Put away results. I'm going to make it now. I click on put away. So here, I will now query on the GRN number of 1001 and then give a tap. And then click on search now. Fine. We're going to go here. This is the GRN number. You select and then this activity is called a put away. Put away into sub inventory actually. Fine. Click on put away. I'm now going to make a put away into the sub inventory. Click on put away. And then here, what happens? You go there. So every quantity is now then fine. Every uh, the entire 50 we're going to put away. So we have to mention the sub inventory in which what happens? You're going to put away now. Fine, go there. So if you don't mention sub inventory and then click on submit, what happens? You are not writing the submit without a sub inventory. It will not say cheapo. You have to enter the sub inventory. Without sub inventory, I will not accept it now. Fine, go there. Drop it now. And then choose the appropriate sub inventory. Fine, go there. FGS, I'm putting it now. Fine, go there. So click on submit now. What happens? We can very well deliver it. The put away transaction is now getting complete. Now, if you go there, go to this place and then have a look at the quantity. If I go there, make a search now. The receiving will go, will go and go in the click on search now. It is already gone. Po in the poe poch gone. It's all gone into the in, in one hand. Thousand fifty. Now, what happens? This completes so what happens? A simple what happens? A purchase order and result. Now we are going to push it into payables actually. We are going to push it into payables actually. So we have to go on what happens? The payable setup section. So we are going to make a payable setup. So the first setup is what uh, we have already done the common options for payables and procurement. Now next one is what purchasing uh, the payables options. So there is a payables option is there. And click on it now. Go there. The payables options has to be set up. Click on setup and maintenance, and then there is no set of the payables options. <clears throat> go there. Click on it now. And then here we go to the search. Find is manage percentage. 
pay percentage OPT percentage and entry amount and payable options. So manage payment of payables options, payable profile options. There is a payment options. Payable profile options. No, no, not profile options. Payables manage pay may, may not be options, but payable setups of another I'm not sure about manage pay. Anybody know who knows what are the payable options which is there in this one? Right? Uh, yes, sir. Manage payable options, but payable options. No. Yeah, payable options. Payment options are only there. No? Yeah, payable options. Manage payable options. Manage receivables payment options as pay, 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 pay. pay. Which one it is on there? If you make it so big, not visible in this page. Anybody is able to find out how to manage? I want to say manage uh, pay options. So payables profile option is there. Option. Not payment options. Not payment options. Hold on. Hmm? Payable. P A Y A B L E. Fine. So manage payables calendars. Manage account payables rules. What I found. Not a finance man basically. Fine. Not aware of it. So you might have set up the payables options, man. Uh, anybody, I will uh, make a stop of this moment. So it's manage invoice options actually. We'll go there. It's manage invoice options. So scope selection is the first one. Fine. Click on scope selection. And then if you don't do it, no fine. Go there. So click on what self map. And then click on apply and go to ask. So manage invoice options the one. Go there. It's a G01 now. G01 and then click on search now. And then it's not coming. Fine. Go there. Click on save and close now. Manage invoice options the one. So here, what happens? You set up everything. Fine. You'll now make the pay group. One of them is a pay group. Some pay group. Priority is okay. Fine. Payment terms is immediate. Terms date basis, invoice date, pay date basis, invoice. Fine. All these things are getting defaulted with some values. So uh, require invoice grouping is not allowed. This kind of thing. All these things I'm not testing it up. Fine. Visit acceptance days is not required. Invoice currency, I will now make it as what USD. They will now default as such. Fine. Otherwise, you can very well over it. Fine. Payment currency is also given. Fine. So matching, I'm not going to do anything at all. Fine, go there. So quality dollars, amount dollars, all this thing, I'm not setting it. Discount is okay, I'm not requiring this. And then here, uh, payment terms is immediate, no, fine, go there. Settlement days is not required. So these things are not required. I'm going to go there, go down. And then here, the payment terms, let me make it as what? Two by 10 at 30. And this is coming because of what? Your RDS, no, fine. The, the, the RDS has been set for this, no, fine, go there. Well. And then pay group, fine, go there. Click on it, no, fine. If you have a pay group, you can add it, no, fine. And you put the first pay group. So I have now uh, set up so many things on this now. <coughs> Go there and then say it now. Huh? Uh, so your currency is also. We got it. So it's also. The manage invoice options. Now. Okay. Uh, Seven plus. So here, what happens? The value of the attribute payment terms is not valid. That's what it's saying now. Payment terms is not valid. So the payment terms is immediate is not coming fine. The two by ten is Why is not valid? Tell me. The payment terms is not valid. It is now saying why. This is only a valid one because what happens? This has got an RDS set actually. The RDS is now set. So because of it is not a I give a save now again. You'll not see any other errors coming fine. The value of the attribute payment terms is not valid. Uh, the set assignment for payment terms immediate is not complete. So we might have set it somewhere is immediate. Now make a change to uh -huh. yeah. Here what happens? Pay group no, not uh, this is a payment term. I will not make it as this one. So these two things because of the RDS is not coming. You will save now. I will not go and see. I think it must have got saved. Click on save and close. By which what happens? Your invoice options is now complete. You are not covered as invoice options. Now we go to the payables and then directly what happens? I try to create an invoice for this one. Before we create the invoice, we'll not see this one. 3001. Click on done. So we'll now go to the payables. Click on it. We'll now go to the payables. 
go there you know go to what the payables now payables is here now i'm going to click on invoice now. payables invoice i'm going to go there i will not put the purchase order number fine what happens uh, there is no create button coming up over here now fine previously it used to come i don't know why it's so so click on the task carousel and then go for the great invoice so click on the great invoice i'm not going to get invoice now fine. i will not put the purchase order number as a reference now fine 3000 is the purchase order number so the po is what 3000 and then give it up it will be coming automatically fine go there all the things will be getting set as such now fine go there click on it now. so attribute accounting date in invoice is required fine go there click on it now. so the number i will not put as what 1001 now amount let us say amount is not coming as such now fine go there uh, where is the accounting date which has to be put now in the show more the date is there now fine accounting date is there fine go there payment terms Ah, yeah, period is not open. Fine, go there. We have to open the periods first of all, right? Good thing. Then, fine, go there. Let us now go and then open the periods actually. Fine, go there. So, let us go to the general ledger and then open the periods actually. Fine, periods are not open as such now. So, we have to open the period. Fine, general accounting and then here what happens? You go to the period close. Fine, go there. So, the period close, we are going to go for it now. Fine. So, let us first of all open the GL period and then afterwards this man, GL period itself is not open now. Fine, go there. Click on it. So, now this is the general now. Fine, go there. Click on it. So, let us open the GL now. Open the GL period. Fine. The first period is January. Fine. Go there. Click on OK. January 19 is the first period. Fine. Click on yes now. So we will now open the GL period and then afterwards the payables period now. The process is now submitted. So here, what happens? You go there. And then uh, the refresh button, if you refresh it, what happens? Once it is open, it will be coming now. Then we will now open up to April or May on the GL. And then afterwards, what happens? Open the payables period also. So it's not done. Fine. Go to January is open. Fine. Go to the actions and then go to the open target period. So here, what happens? You go there and then make it as what uh, July or something like that. And then click on open now. So we are now opening up to July now. Fine. Click on yes now. It is now submitted. So refresh it now. What happens? All the periods will open. So once when the GL periods are open, we are going to open the payables period now. So July is now done. Fine. Click on done. Now, click on the payable period. Now, fine. Go to the payable period. Is never open. Fine. Click on the payable period. I'm going to open the payable period. Now, fine. The first period I'm opening it up was what? Why the first period is not coming? As January 19. Anybody? So, so January is not coming because what happens? We have to log out and log in. Now, fine. Only when you log out and log in, it will be coming. Now, fine. You cancel now. Go there, click on down. So the January will come only after you open the GL period. You have to log out and log in. Now, fine. Click on sign out, and then I'm signing in now. So click on sign out, and then let me sign in again. So click on confirm, and then I will now sign in. So once when the GL periods are open, what you have to do is you have to go there and then open this. Now. Oh, sign out and sign in for this to come now. And go there. So the password is coming. Fine. Click on it. Now, fine. Go inside. Now, if you go there, you will be able to what happens? Do this. So click on the general accounting. And then here, what happens? You go to the period close. Now you go to the payable period. Now January will come now. So after this, what happens? You have to do it now. Fine, go there, drop it down, you'll get January. So remember, when you open the GL period afterwards, you have to sign out and sign in and then use it now. Fine, go there. Click on OK now. This is the first period for this one. So the selected period, uh, the initial period of the sub, sub ledger. So what is the GL now? Fine. What is this? Do you want to continue? Is it okay now? This is error message. You will not be able to open any period. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. He's saying that before this, you cannot open anything. This is our first period. That is what is giving a warning. So if you open accidentally January 19, then December 18, you cannot open. That is what the message is now. It's okay. So click on actions and then open the target period now. And then let me see what happens somewhere in this period. Now. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So click on open now. You want me to wait? Or? Huh? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we are continuing now. So now, if you go on and refresh it, now, right? so we are given what the opening of all the periods now. Fine, click on that now. Fine. Let us now go to the payables and then have a look at it now. So it's all done now. Fine. Right? The payable period is also open. Fine, go there. Click on it now. We will now go to the payables directly and then we will now what? We will not do this now. I shake your class like that. Night to go, night to go, brother. Class like that. Okay. 
go there go to the payables now okay on payables <coughs> and then go to the invoices now i will not say the ready period so create problem is coming and click on create previously used to have a create invoice button also here now i click on create invoice so now we are going to create an invoice fine go there identifying po is what 3000 and then give a tab now so it's all populated over here now fine number as i am putting it as what 1001 now and go there and now here what happens if you click on the match lines if you click on it what happens it will be coming as such if you click on the match lines it will not go to the next screen as such and go the amount i have not put fine go there uh, i will not put some amount fine go there 100 go there and then click on this line now and go there click on the invoice match lines you must provide a value for the attribute liability distribution now that means what it is missing somewhere actually if you go to the show more we will not write to provide the liability distribution over here now in this place We will not see where exactly we have to put the liability distribution now. Uh, lines lower. Liability distribution. You go to the accounting now. In the accounting, the general is not there. Liability distribution. I don't know. Ten iPhone, hundred iPhone, one thousand two is the one. I go there. So it has to be set on the manage mapping set somewhere. I think because of this, what I am not throwing in there. I go there. So the liability distribution now provided. I go there. And then now, if you click on the match invoice lines, it has to go to the next line for matching. Actually, it goes. We will not see <coughs> whether it goes or not. It is not going. Okay, fine. So I will not process this invoice. Actually, fine. I will not do a systematic one. Now, fine. Give a cancel now. I will not do it. So before I go on, what happens? I do it now. I will not give a cancel. Let us now make a new purchase order. Then do it now. Fine. Go to the purchase orders now. Fine. Let us now make a new purchase order. I will not give a done now. So let me copy this purchase order into a new one. And before which, what happens? Sir? We have to know what happens. Sir? The accounting also on this one. I am not told about the accounting on this one. So when you make a purchase order, what happens? Sir? There are no accounts which are hit actually. When you make a gate receipt, the receiving inspection account is hit on the debtor side, and then the contra entry is accrual account actually. The first entry. So upon gate receipt, what happens? These two entries are made. When you deliver the substance, the inventory, what happens? Sir? These these two accounts are hit. The purchase price variance will be hit only for what happens your standard costing organization. For average costing organization, this will not be there. So here, what happens? The inventory middle account or the charge account that is getting hit now, and then the contra entry is receiving inspection. So this gets what happens relieved over here. So after the two stages of accounting, after this ordering, what happens? Your what happens? Your accrual to charge will be remaining as such. Accrual account to the charge account will be. Remaining. now we are going to make a relief what happens we are going to relieve the accrual by matching so once when you what happens relieve your accrual by ma matching it matching it to the invoice what happens this distribution gets created invoice distribution gets created right the, the distribution type will be accrual and then what happens if there is any variation the pp ipv account will be hit this is mainly because of currency variation when you are traveling when you are dealing on the multiple currency it will be coming and then afterwards what happens the cust the supplier is asking for freight miscellaneous interest and tax all this into the coming And then the total liability will be calculated actually. So here the invoice AV AP accrual account is nothing but a notional liability. It indicates how many quantities are accrued for payment. And remember, this accrual is quantity based and not amount based, but represented in amount actually. That is a thousand amount, thousand pieces at eleven thousand rupees. Right? So thousand pieces are accrued for clearing actually. So we clear it over here now, and then afterwards the accrual gets cleared. And then once the accrual is cleared, the actual liability gets cleared. Fifteen thousand four hundred actually. So after the third stage of accounting, what happens if we go on and see your charge account to what happens the liability will be the balance accounts. Now what happens you use your payment processor and then what happens you are not going to clear it now. The liability gets knocked off and then the cash clearing is hit once when you issue a check or electronic payment or whatever it is. So after the fourth stage of accounting, the charge account to what happens your cash clearing will be there. And then finally what happens you go there. and then you do the reconciliation using cash management actually so once when you do it what happens the cash clearing gets reconciled and then what happens it comes over here and then what happens the cash will be hit so you will be doing a manual or automatic reconciliation that is all done so after the fifth stage of accounting what happens your charge account to cash account which are the ultimate entries on a procure to pay life cycle will be there only these two accounts right the charge to cash so what happens in a purchasing environment what happens we are going to analyze the spend actually the module itself is only for what spend analysis so there are very many ways of charging that one so if you have an expense charging let's like say i am going to buy cement or i am going to buy sand i am going to buy some other thing right so 
material wise each and every item wise we can even have what am i say charge to cash analysis actually so by doing this analysis on a weekly basis or a monthly basis what am i say you can now see about how much of money you are spending on the purchasing the ptp life cycle and then we can optimize the purchases this is going to do a lot of things on this on from the accounting perspective so they will analyze it so spend reduction is ultimate aim of a p2p life cycle actually so this can be done and do orders so this is all done so here what happened there are three accounts which are very important one is what the accrual account and then one is what the charge account and then one is the ipv account variance account and that we are just set up and these three accounts are very important of course we had set up the other accounts also then only what happened doing but the bare minimum three accounts has to be set for making the purchase order through now what happens we are going to make money right now what happens we are now going to make a two way po right two way po so we will now first concentrate po means what when you are going to obtain this account this amount we are not going to see the receipt right based upon the po itself what happens we will not obtain the distribution the distribution is obtained based upon the po itself right so we will now create what yeah this one now right we will now create <coughs> we go there we will now create a purchase order and then we will now do a two way po match structure and go that click on it now so here we are going to the procurement and then we will now go to the purchase orders now we are going to make a two way po now. now we are now in the process of p2p push actually procure to pay push and go that click on it now so here what happens you go there and then we will now what happens go to the manager orders and then let me query the 3000 order now i know that 3000 order is now getting queried now i can on search now so i am querying the 3000 order so once when you query it, what happens you go there go to actions and then go to re duplicate repeat a repeat order is now getting created fine go to actions and then go to duplicate now so i am now getting creating a repeat order now fine 3001 is now getting created now so for the 3001 what happens is now completed fine go there i will now go to the schedules now we go to the schedules we go there and then click on edit now fine go there edit so select the lines and then in the schedules what happens you click on edit and then i am going to make it as a two way po now fine so here what happens you go down po is order fine it is going to be matched against the order orders now if you are going to match it against the order what happens here the receipt will not be considered at all whether you receive it or not we can very well pay the distribution for the third one can be obtained by the po itself and not by the receipt actually very what so is a po match we call them as a po match so once when you do it what happens the invoice distribution can be obtained by po itself and there is no need for us to receive at all that means what without receiving we are going to make a payment right that is so we go there and then do it now and is the one and then the two way this is for basically approvals now basically approvals i will tell i will come to this bottom two way three way four way and i will complete a bit later now and go us so it's not up so it's a two way po order and go there and then click on okay now <coughs> is what does fine go there so we have what 100 quantities on this one and on quantities it's okay fine at the price of what what is the price we are given now uh we might have given a price of 2 or something like that you can now see in the top now fine go there so it's only one now fine go there now 1.5 is the price on this so 1.5 is the price and so what happens it comes to what uh 101 101 1 not 1.5 is the price actually and that the price which has come now and go there if you want you can very well modify it you go to the lines level and then make a modification now so you are negotiating with the supplier and then the supplier says okay i will now supply it one of one rupee so go and make a change normally it won't be less it will be only more actually so it's not done now so if you go on the top and then see what happens you know change to 101 now and go there so now let us submit this approval 3001 is now getting submitted for a two way po thank you for submitting now it is now getting submitted for a two way po so the document purchase order has been submitted for approval and so what happens you can go there there is no need to receive at all here receiving is not a mandatory one because it's do we go so without which what happens we can very well create a invoice and then we can obtain the distribution by matching it also by matching it we can very well obtain it and go there so let us now go there go to the payable and then go to the payables and then here what happens we go there and then click on what uh, you will not go and create invoice now for 3001 pu click on create invoice we are going to create it now so the identifying pu is what 3001 and then give a tab now so once we give a tab everything gets populated so the number is what 1002 i am going to put it now fine go there so he is not charging for the entire one fine so the invoices for the entire quantity and remember nothing has been received to go there so it's not done so given uh, we are now submitted you go to the show more details and then here what happens in the accounting the liability has to be set somebody find out about how to set it up automatically and somewhere we have to set it up now fine otherwise i am not manually setting it up so if you know it please teach me but how do we now so the liability account is not a mandatory one and go there go to the general after having put the account what happens you go there and then click on the match this is a match line 
so you go there so since we are given a po match in the purchase order what happens it will be matched against the po and then it tell you whether how much will be eligible for selected so select this line the moment you select it what happens the entire quantity will be coming fine here what happens the supplier has now asked for the entire one now fine go the unrun one quantity so click on apply and then click on okay so by which what happens the line distribution is not obtained so we obtain the line distribution now fine so the line distribution is obtained by matching it now so only when you match it what happens the accrual gets relieved actually here what happens the accrual if you match it and then get it then only what happens it will be getting relieved here here the space what happens it has been matched and then so then only what happens will be correct now fine if you don't match it what happens it will never get relieved and then what happens it will be giving a very wrong figure actually so it don't have now we go there and then in this place what happens give a same now we go to give a same and then let us now try to validate it now so the invoice 1002 is now created fine go there it is not validated invoice actions and i will now go and then validate it so go there i will now validate it now so once when you validate it it will now get validated and then if accounting is all set it is now validated actually fine go there if accounting is all set for only for you will now accounting also will be done fine create accounting i will now do the create accounting now uh where is that now create accounting view approval it normally used to be eh? oh post ledger or account account in draft okay account in draft fine you go on and do the accounting in draft what happens it will be showing you i think this icon will be explaining all now accounting is complete now fine click on okay now fine now have a look at the account now account. this is account icon for showing the accounts no it now expanding it and then we're showing you going to show something now fine with it so we are now completed what a two way po now fine a two way po is now completed now we will now go on and see a three way zip the three way zip will be shown over now so the icon has been clicked on it i think i think it will be showing you all the uh, what's called Uh, the intelligence of this invoice actually fine what are the things which has happened on this invoice now so let it come in the meantime what happens let me create a three way zip invoice three way zip one fine go there go to the manager on us and then click on done now then here what happens again go there so go to actions and then here what happens i'm going to duplicate it i will not duplicate it so 3002 will be created fine 3002 is now getting created and go there in the schedules region i'm going to make a change of three way zip now fine go there click on it now go there you go there And then here, what happens? What is? You go down. I will now make it as a result match. And then here it is a three-way. It is a three-way result match. So three-way result match. Right. Three-way means what? Invoice will be compared against the PO as well as the resulted quantity. If it is a two-way, invoice will be compared only against the PO quantity for approval search, for approvals, for validation. When you validate it, what happens? It will be checking all this. So three-way is the one. So three way result. Fine, go that. So click on OK. <coughs> no, no. And then now, what happens? You click on submit. Three thousand two is not going to be submitted. Fine, click on submit. Now. So we are submitting this invoice for this. Now, fine, go that. So the document was submitted for approval. Actually, three thousand two will be submitted. Now let us go there. Go to the inventory and then receive it. Now. So one not one is the quantity. Let me receive fifty quantities on this. Click on done now. So let us now go and then receive only fifty quantities on this. Now, fine, click on OK now. We are going to make a result of only fifty quantities. So again, what happens? You go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory now. Inventory management, and then there you go to the result area. Click on it now, and here what happens? You go to go to the result area. <clears throat> so you change it to what results now, and then click on receive expected shipments, and then three thousand two. I am going to make a query now. Purchase orders what three thousand two? And then click on search now. Again, what happens since the approval is not yet complete? What happens? It has been submitted for approval, but it is not complete. For once when it is coming, what happens? It is coming now. I have submitted for approval, no? Have it done? I have submitted for approval, no? Now, what happens in this place? It will take some time, basically. Maybe, yeah. It is an automatic approval only. I hope that nobody has changed it actually. Otherwise, what happens? It will be giving a problem. Somebody has changed the approval means what? It will not work at all. Fine, go there. So let us now go there and then go to the three thousand two now. Fine, go there. Click on search now. Because it's a universal system, it's now open. Fine, go there. Now, open. now you go there. You go to this place and then click on search. Fine. Fine. Right. <clears throat> hey, what? Wow. Why is not coming? Is there any mistake on the R? Because we only copied it, na? Sir, sir. Today our organization is zero zero. Ah. Then to go from. Oh God! Oh God! Go on. Fine. Click on change organization because. 
so many teams are working now. My brother, you are straight on down. Come on, come on. Ah, click on change organization. Receive expected shipment is what? We go there. It's a G01. Can I click on OK now? G01. G011. Click on OK now. You go there and then click on the receive expected shipments. Now, fine, go there. You're going to receive it now. It's a G01. So, 3002 is the purchase order number. Fine, go there. Click on query. Now it's coming. So, the org was wrong. So, let me receive only 50 on this one. Or 25, let me receive. 25, let me receive. So, if you have received in the gate, that is more than sufficient. If you click on the show receipt corner, it will not show you how much is expected now. 101 is expected. I will now make a change to 25 now. I go there. And then I'm now making a gate receipt. It need not be delivered. I will not click on submit now. Fine. Once when the gate receipt is made for 25 quantities now, and the quantity is 25, then it becomes eligible for invoicing actually. Now, the supplier is now going to ask for 30 quantities now. Right? For 30 quantities, is going to ask for this. So it is not done. I click on done and then come out of it now. So what are the PO amount to find? We'll go there and see now. I go there. Click on search now. I will not. There already 3002 is there. Now I go there. Click on it now. So in the 3002, whether I have changed the listing or not, fine. 151. So again, 1.5 is the amount. Fine. 1.5. I have now kept it as a now. I have not made a change actually. And 1.5 is the amount. So the price is 1.5. So uh, what happens? I will now take uh, what happens? 25 quantities is now received. If you go for 30, what happens? The price he is going to claim is how much? With 1.5. For 30 quantities, how much the invoice amount now? It's 45. So we will now make a price for 45. So it's a three way result, remember. Fine. Three way result is a match. Fine. Go there. So what we have to do is if you go there, go to this place now, we are now going to get an invoice. Now. So here, what happens? It's not showing you something now. Fine. Go there. Uh, only the what's called the, the documents, uh, the related, the referencing. Fine. There are so many intelligence information which is not coming up on this now. Fine. This place now. That's okay. Can just watch it. Give it. What happens? The save and close. So now, what happens? I will now go on and create another invoice for this three thousand two now. And click on create invoice. So you go there. So the identifying PO is what three thousand two, isn't it? Give it So the one I'm choosing it now. So what happens? I will now put one thousand three as the invoice number now. And one thousand three is the invoice number. Amount is how much? I'm going to put now forty five is the amount. Fine. He is now claiming for thirty quantities. Fine. Go there. So now, but we have received only how much? 30 now. Fine. We have received only 25. Fine. 35, 30 is not received. Fine. Go there. We will now go to this match. So the moment you click on the match, it will automatically make a result match only and not a PO match. Because PO says what? It is a result match. Since the purchase order says it is a result match, it will automatically make a match only for the result and not for the PO. Fine. This is not the case as far as EBS is concerned now. That in the header, we have to explicitly write whether it is a PO match or a result match. Fine. Exactly as per the PO. If you don't do it, it will not match at all. Here it is not so. The matching is automatic as far as uh, fusion is concerned. Fine, click on it now. Fine, it's going to match the nothing. So you must provide the live. Ah, go there, go to the show mode, and then you go to the accounting. And then let me provide the accounting. So 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1002. Fine. If you know about how to automatically populate, please teach me. And click on general now. And go there. In this place, what happens? You go and then match it now. Fine. For the 45 quantities, the 1003 is the one. Fine, click on match now. So I'm going to match it and then obtain this now. I'm going to click on it. So I'm matching it. Select it. Now. So how much of quantity you are matching? Remember, it is all what happens. Accrual is quantity based. Basically. We have to only put the quantity now. I will not put the 30 quantity. Over here. So 30 quantity. Fine. 45 is the amount. Fine. Give it a tap. So it will be coming as what? 45. So now what happens? It's not going to give a 45 is the one. Fine. So in the header also is a 45. Click on apply now. Fine. So it's a, what happens is now gum as what? As a red color actually. The red color is coming back. Click on apply. So click on apply. <clears throat> so now it is applied now. Fine. Click on OK now. Fine. Click on apply and then you know, learn OK. And go there. It's not coming. Now what happens? A warning message is coming. In EBIS, what happens? Uh, it will now result in now what happens? A hold actually. A hold will be created actually. So a hold is now getting created. And then uh, what happens? It will be coming here. What happens? It's not a hold. Now it's a warning message. Now, in the latest version of eBiz also, what happens is they have removed the hold and then what happens it allows you. It allows you. In the previous version of eBiz, what happens in the 11.1.x, it will be raising a hold. Now, in 12.2.x onwards, what happens is not raising a hold. It allows you. What happens it will not allow you to do it. Because the payables clerk is only entering. He knows that 25 is only received. Fine, go there. If you go on and see on the bottom, what happens it will not show you how much is received. Also, everything is not coming. So, here, your match is now saying is not, you are not overbilling. 
So what happens is no saying is no. This is an overbill. Okay, doesn't matter. Fine. He has only done it. Fine. Okay, fine. It's only a warning message. Now, if you go there, you go to the invoice actions and then what happens? You go and then validate. It will not get validated. You won't have any problem at all. It will not save this and then it will not validate. So you can very well do it. Now it's validated. You go there. If you go to the accounting and draft, what happens? It will be getting accounted also. So since the payables clerk is doing intentionally overbilling, what happens? It allows you. And go there in this place. What happens? You go and see this now. So in the line level, <coughs> uh, where is general now? You go there and how about the line level? Now? The line level, if you go on and see this on my other orders. So, how to see the details actually? Somewhere you can see that. How much he has received, how much has been invoiced, and items is there, and go there. Freight, miscellaneous tax, everything. The distribution is not shown over here now. It will also show you how much has been received also. When you make a match, what happens? It will be showing you also. When you make a match also, what happens other time? It will not show you. I have not tried to click on this icon. And then see the information. Right? Ordered is this much, billed is this much, received is this much. Is it clear now? Right? Is it? So we are now making a overbilling actually. We are now made a overbilling. And so what happens? The system allows you to what happens, do a overbilling also, provided the payables clerk is ac accepting this 30 commodities on the screen. Right. Now, the next topic is what? Automatic creation of an invoice. Now, right? We are going to automatically create an invoice. Now, right? Click on cancel now. So we are going to get an automatic invoice. So we will now open up one more tab region. Right? Duplicate tab. Now, now we will now enable the supplier for automatic creation. Right? If a supplier is a really good supplier, what happens? We will now automatically create what happens. It's called self billing. The self billing can be done for what happens. Very good suppliers basically. If I go there, go to this place, click on the supplier. We are now going to see automatic creation of invoice. What is it? Sir? Yeah, tell me. Sir, this is Prajesh. Uh, sir, can we able to see the accounting entries for the received material? Oh God, accounting entries, I don't know how to see this. No, okay. uh, I think probably uh, Baskaran will now teach you about how to see the accounting entries for this. No, okay, accounting has been completed in a draft mode basically. Okay. But uh, since I don't know financials, what happens, I'm not... Uh, you, you are aware of it, no? For the receipt, sir? For, uh, for accounting is there, no? Fine. Actions view accounting. Yeah? No, no, no. When you give uh, uh, post as... Uh, yeah. post, yeah. post as you have. There will be a button that comes. Sir, I am asking for the received materials, sir, for not invoice for the not for the invoice. Yeah, yeah. We are now making a match for the received materials. Yeah. We received only 25, but we are we are done a overbilling also. Yes. Uh, you can discuss with your colleagues regarding the accounting. Okay. Exactly. You can see the accounting. The so second thing, hmm. sir. Sir, tell me. Uh, sir, we have made that uh, uh, PO duplicate PO, no? Yeah. That we have selected two way and uh, I have modified it. I I copied it and then afterwards what happens? I modified modified it from a two way PO to three way position. Yes, sir, in that yellow way there is no four way option at all. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. The four way option will come if you choose the receipt routing as inspection. Okay, okay. If the receipt routing is inspection, what happens? The four way also will come. Okay, sir. thank you. Sir. And remember, the payables clerk has got all the authority to override whatever is being set on the payment. Because what happens because of supplier may be insisting that what happens you take the payment what happens otherwise what happens I will not be able to make the next supplies. So for which what happens the payables clerk has got has been given full authority to overwrite whatever has been set on the payment. So the two-way three-way PO is only for the approval purposes or validation purposes. And then the two-way the PO match or the result match is for obtaining the distribution. How you are going to obtain the distribution? Right. And you click on the match invoice line. It is going to do against the PO or against the result actually. Again, if that is not, not exactly set, and then what happens? If nothing is received, and then he is asking for 15 quantities payment also, what happens? It will now only give a warning. Right? So it's only going to give a warning. And then when the PO match, what happens here? The <coughs> when you receive it, what happens? Accrual to this charge. <coughs> this invoice line type is accrual, right? This are all getting hit naturally. In a PO match, it's a different one. Right? It is not like this because nothing is being received here. No? Right? In the PO match, even without receiving, what happens? You are obtaining this level line of situation. Again, talk to some guys. You tell, tell you about how the accounting takes place for a two-way match. A PO match. Basically. This is only for a result match. And for a PO match, how the accounting is the hit, I am not very sure about it. Right? Again, you have to discuss with somebody. Maybe with Bhaskar, you can ask him. Right? He may be able to tell you about how the accounting on this. Okay, my good. So now what happens, we are now going to make an automation. Right? Upon result, what happens, we are going to create the invoices automatically. So what happens, I go there. I will not go to the managed suppliers now. I click on it. So let me go to the managed suppliers. 
in the managed supplies area what happens i will no query my supplier no find that the g01 and then click on search now find you are searching it so once again the recording is going on you know see it's going on so you go there and then click on edit now so here what happens you go to the site level now you go to the site level and then edit now so edit the site you go edit the site now find you you go to the purchasing area so how you going to make a payment so here what happens i will not say uh, i will not make a payment on receipt right i will not say pay on receipt so upon receipt we are going to make a payment automatically that means what the invoice will be created and then what is the invoice summary level i am going to go there and then i will say what happens on the pay side you know beginning with the pay side now and click on it and then save and close so close and then submit it again so now what we had done again i will not tell you i open the site edited and then i go on to the purchasing and then i have enabled the pay on the tick mark and then what happens the summary level is pay site that means what we will not summarize on the site level and then we will not make a payment so on a site level so when i was working on ispath industries uh, or other when i was working on steel quality so what happens they used to make what happens they will not summarize on a weekly basis right? everything will be accumulated and then on a friday what happens they will not summarize everything and then they will not make a payment so invoice gets created but payment will be happening only on friday so on which what happens you won't summarize on what way you are going to summarize now right now we're going to begin with the pay side now fine go there we will not go for another way which is a very famous way actually so this is not done and go there save and close now and then here what happens we go there and then click on submit by which what happens the change on this now is not done now if you go there and then create a purchase order what happens you can now see the tick mark will becoming the pay on the tick mark will becoming automatically because the supplier is now enabled on this the pay on the is not coming so let me give it done and then let us now create a new purchase order on this now. so click on done and then come out of it and then you're going to make a new purchase order fine click on it now and then let us let us now create a new one <coughs> on the same supplier so supplier is what we go there a01 so it's not the a01 it's a g01 so we'll now put the supplier over here now and go there click on supplier and then click on create i am now going to create a new po now you can now see the pay on the it will be defaulted on this but now for this po i don't want the auto create now then you can even remove it because it is not enabled in the supplier now it is editable actually now whichever way you want on a particular po if you don't want to auto auto create a invoice then don't put it now it's not done do that so let me go there in the lines region let me add it so item is what i will not put g01 <clears throat> there is only one item here now right we have got only one one kanne kanne and go there So we'll now go and then put the order quantity as what hundred now. <clears throat> order quantity is hundred. So let me change the price to one. It'll be easy for us to move it. And then go to the schedules. And then go to the schedules. In the schedules, what happens? We have to give one of the dates as a mandatory date actually. And go there. Let us not do the date. And I'll now put this date. Today's date. Today's date. And go there. Right. We don't want to have a look at it. Now fine. Go there. If you go there, it will be two way PO. No, in this edit. If you go there, if you edit, it will be two way PO. It doesn't matter. Fine. So that we already discussed now, right? It only going to create what a warning message, right? If the payable clerk can very well what happens? This is how you are going to obtain the distribution, right? Distribution obtaining by a order match or a result match, and then this is for approvals. When you validate it, what happens? It will be checking it actually. When you make this inspection required, what happens? You cannot see it. The four way also will be coming. Right? For the other ones, what happens? It will not be coming. And is that is what is called? I will not say uh, it's a direct delivery. Right? In one go, what happens? You are delivering it actually. And the, You go there and then done it. Now find go there. So this is the auto. What happens? Invoice creation. Right? Click on OK now. And then click on submit. Three thousand C is now submitted. So hundred quantities at one price is now one dollar. Find click on submit. Now let us now go there and receive it now. Find we are going to receive it now. So let us then receive it for say forty quantities. We are going to receive out of hundred. We are going to receive forty. For which what happens? The invoice creation is automatic. Find click on this now. Yet what happens? You go to the receipts now. Uh, is the one inventory management click on it so 3003 i am going to make a reserve now i go there click on receive expected shipments for 3003 now click on 3003 give a time now. so click on search now i am going to search for it what am i now click on it so let us now receive 40 quantities against the 100 quantities now. so click on show to zip quantity it will show you how much is expected from supplier you make a change from 100 to 40 now 40 is going not going to click on create reserve we are going to create reserve So once when the gate receipt is made, what happens? You must enter the submit order because it's not direct delivery. So what happens? So now what happens? It becomes eligible for what happens? Invoicing actually. Click on it. Click on create. So the invoice 
what happened the result is not automatic on submit by which what happened is not completed 1003 is no submitted now for i have given only 40 quantities na no? am i correct at the 40 only so okay fine so 40 is now given okay the remaining quantity is now 65 okay on done now what happens uh, in ebus there will be one concurrent which will be running actually a concurrent will be running now and we will not see whether it runs or not here it is not running we only have to run the concurrent manually basically there is another problem here actually so we go there and that we will not run the concurrent manually okay we will not go to the scheduled process now on the other one ah it is social actually i click on it now there is a tool go further now More. Click on the more tools and then schedule process. So here, what happens? You can now see over. Now this concurrent is not running actually. So click on the schedule new process. So this is a problem here. What happens? We only have to what run it now. Send percentage pay percentage and then give it down. Send pay on the send pay and then click on search now. Send pay on the is a concurrent now. So this is the one. So this will now push the receipt data into the payables interface table. Okay. Okay. So click on OK. Send the payable receipt and go on. So go there. I will now say transaction source. Fine. Go there. It's what happens? It's the evaluated receipt settlement. ERS. We call it ERS. Fine. Go there. And then if you know the receipt number, what happens? One thousand. And then give a tab number. I'm not sure about number. The latest number will be. Fine. Go there. It must be one thousand three basically. And if you leave it blank, it will be running for everything. If you give a aging period, what happens? It will now age for that much of a time. Let us say I am now going to give two days now. Only after two days it will be getting created. Because what happens? Upon result, you have to wait for two days, and then only what happens? We are getting invoices. So if you give a aging, what happens? It will be coming over. Otherwise, what happens? It will be just no. So the aging period is now as a profile actually. If you set up the profile, what happens? It will be coming automatically over. I am now making it as zero. Thank you for submitting. Fine. So one thousand three is now submitted. Now what happens? It will be triggering an auto invoice process. So what happens? You can now see send pay on receipt is not going to run now. So upon completion of it, what happens? This itself will not trigger the import process for the payables invoice actually. So it's not running. So once when it's completed, what happens? You can see import payables invoice is not running. Fine. But this concurrent has to be scheduled actually. It is another problem. You have to run it every ten minutes or fifteen minutes. And so what happens? Whichever is being received, what happens? That has to be. What happens? That uh, has to be. You have to create the import invoice. So click on it. Import payables invoice is now running. The report is now is now completed. Now if you go there and then go to the payables and then search for it, what happens? You'll not find the invoice for forty one days on. You go there. I will not go to this place. I will not go to manage invoices. Not go to invoice workbench. I go there. And then you go there, and then click on Manage Invoices. No, fine. Go there. So we will now go to the Manage Invoices. Then query on a supplier actually. So we will now query on the supplier. The supplier name is what? G zero one. And then click on Search. No. So once when you search for it, what happens? It has to come. <coughs> oh, is expecting a full name or what? Sub one. And then give it a name. Supplier site. Oh. Uh, invoice number. Out of these things, one is mandated. Now, okay, I will not put the supplier over here. Fine, G zero one, and then I give a tab. Supplier number as well. This one. Supplier party name I had to put it in the number. There is a number actually. I click on search now. Of this supplier, we will now see how many invoices are created. We can now see one ERS invoice is now created. An ERS number is coming. Fine, go there. Yeah. So this prefix can be changed basically. You can even change the prefix actually. If you click on it, what happens? You can now see this is for forty dollars. It is for forty dollars. So you can now see the lines distribution is also obtained actually. And then if you go to the lines, the system matches it. And then what happens? They create the line distribution also. Lines distribution is also automatically created. And then what happens? The only thing which is now pending is what? It is not validated actually. It is not validated. So we'll have a small break now. It's not validated. So we had to go there and then validate. Validation is the only activity. Fine, go to the actions and then go to validate. No, validate and then create account. If somebody was you are you are telling about accounting, come and go. Is need need validation? Why it's so? Why why it needs revalidation? Can you see the reason why it needs revalidation? If you click on it, what happens? It will show reason. Fine, 
these rebels system hold eh? system hold why the system hold has come now i don't know why the system hold has come now you go to the holds and approvals uh, we'll now see the system hold on this now point go down is the system hold liability account invalid oh god so since what happens the liability account is not set at the appropriate place what happens is not giving it so if you do it what happens the system will be picking up the liability account there is a there is a mistake or other i i don't know how to set up the liability account when i make the manual invoice i'm setting it up but in the auto route what happens the liability account has to be picked up from somewhere and please teach me what how to do the now because of which the system hold has come the validation is failed okay man we'll now go and then we'll now see that complex part of this auto auto invoicing now fine that is a real one we'll have a small break and then come on okay restoring uh, beginning after a break now we'll go there come on if you watch the invoice number now fine go there so where is the invoice number for this now so here uh, in the lines region it will not show in the header it has to show na the invoice number No, no. That is a new one. Number. Purchase order number is three thousand three. The receipt number is this one. One thousand three is the receipt number. Fine, go there. Now I will now give a save and close and then come out of it. Now, fine, go there. In the outside, what happens? You cannot see this now. So if you see this now, fine. ERS two thousand nine nine four two thousand nine is a date now. ERS is the one, and then a running number is a combination. Now we will now change this invoice pattern, num numbering pattern. We are going to make a change. So now what I'm going to do is I will now change the numbering pattern of the invoice. Fine, right click on that. What happens? Duplicate now. So here there is a profile. There are two profiles which can be set as such. Right? Many people. This is the way. This is a normal operation in a company now. I'm going to click on it. I will now change this. Now. Click on set up. Set up and minimum. And then here I will now go inside. Click on it and then go to the search now. I'll click on search. I will now say manage receiving profiles. Actually, manage percentage. Receiving percentage, profile percentage, manage receiving profiles. So manage receiving profile options, Lama. So you go to the manage receiving profile options now, and here what happens? I am now going to make a change. Click on search; it will now show you all the receiving profiles now. So here what happens? I will now go to the aging period. So some companies will be having a philosophy that what happens after that receipt is made, we have to make a payment. We have to create an invoice only after three days time. I will not go there. Go to the site, and then the profile value will not change it for three days. I will not change it for three days. Fine. So the aging period is now set, and then you see the invoice prefix. Now, fine. Go there. Click on it. Now, fine. Go there. So here, what happens? I will not say the invoice prefix. I am going to set. Now, fine. Go there. I will not say Nana, my name, or any Birla, Tata, whatever only the company name. What happens? You can put it. Now. Click on it. Now, fine. Go there. So I have given a change the prefix as well as the aging period. Now, fine. Go there. Click on it. Now, and then click on save. So these two things, these are the important ones. Click on save now. Fine, we are now change the two of the receiving profiles. So click on save and close. This will be effective only when you log out and log in. Actually, fine, go there. There is no log in. Click on it. There is no log out and log in. Sign out and then sign in. So once when you sign out and sign in, the other tabs this will now become invalid. Actually, fine, click on confirm now. <clears throat> so let us now close all of the ones. So close it, close it, dissu, 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 and then dissu. Now let us now sign it. Now, my brother, it's a G zero one EMP. My brother, click on sign in now. Now I am not going to make a what happens sir? is the invoice based upon the supplier's receipt number. Actually, supplier will be having a number, so that one I am going to use it now. My brother, so this is a normal way of doing it now. My brother, go to this place, you go to the suppliers, and then let me query a supplier. My brother, click on it now. My brother, <clears throat> I will now go to manage suppliers, and then let me query my supplier. Now. So the supplier is G zero one now. Go and then search for it. On search, searching it, and then select it. Now find go and then edit. Now we are going to edit it. So click on edit now. So we are editing it now. And go to the sites level, site level, and then here what happens? You go there, click on edit. And then here you go to the purchasing area. In this area, what happens if you go there? The summary level will not be pay side. Now find you go there. It is on a packing slip actually. So the summary level is on a packing slip. Make it as a packing slip. So the packing slip will now form part of your invoice number. Now. Supplier's packing slip. So whenever the supplier is referring this packing slip number, what happens? Whether we have paid it or not, we can very well see on the invoice. So this is a normal way. When you are creating an order order invoice, what happens? The packing slip will now come as a what happens? 
as an invoice numbering. So there is a prefix nana is there that may be a company's one, and that what happened? This number also. So click on save and close. It is not done. So we are now modified it as packing slip. No, fine. That is the usual way of doing it. No, click on submit. Now what happens? You go there. It is not done. So for the one thousand three PO, fine. What happens? You go to the duplicate tab region, and then you are going to make a result for ten four hundred. Let us now go on the result. So you go to the supply chain execution, and then go to the inventory now. And then here, what happens? We are going to receive against this one. Another ten quantities. We have already received forty quantities, and then we have already what happens? Invoiced it actually. And click on it. Click on it. And then here, what happens? You go there, and then you go and then change it to receipts now, and then click on the receive expected shipments. And then here, organization change organization now. It is G zero one one, and then give enter now. Click on OK now. It's not getting entered now. And then again, go there. <coughs> Receive expected shipments on this now. Fine, go there. It's a three thousand three is a purchase order number. Three thousand three is a purchase order number. Fine, search now. Fine, we are now expecting sixty quantities from you. So now you are going to make a result of what? Only ten quantities now. Fine, now go on the receive. What happens? You now get fifteen quantities. Go click on the show receipt quantity. It will not show you sixty is expected. Let us say he is not supplying fifteen now. Fine, fifteen. So he is not supplying fifteen. And then since it is the direct result, what happens? You are now going to put the supplementary also. Fine, go there. I will now put the supplementary. And then click on create. Sir. So in this area, we are going to put the packing slip number of supplier. Supplier will be giving a packing slip number. I will now say P A C K underscore one two three. So we will be able to track the invoice based upon the packing slip number. So the packing slip number will be forming part of the invoice actually. So you fill up this information and then click on submit. So this invoice for fifteen quantities will be done like this. So the G R N is now said. So one thousand four is the G R N number. Packs one two three is the one. Thank you. Okay now. And then let us now run the concurrent again. Right click on the duplicate now. So we are going to run the concurrent. Fine. Send <coughs> pay. Go there. Go there. Go there. Click on more now. And then go to the scheduled process now. Fine. Go to the scheduled process. And then here, what happens if we are going to run it now? <coughs> scheduled process. Click on schedule new process now. So send percentage, pay percentage. And then you will tab now. So click on search now and send pay. And then you are using it now. And click on OK now. <clears throat> so here, what happens? The transaction source is ERS now. Right? The zip number is what? One thousand four, isn't it? One thousand four is the one. And then you can see the aging period has to default now. Fine. I don't know. Uh, it has to default. I don't know why it is not defaulting. So afterwards, what happens? You change the aging period. Now we are set up on the profile what three now, fine. So maybe it will not take some time basically, fine. Even though we are logged out and logged in, what happens is not coming. So otherwise, what happens when it says three or four, you make a change of this also. It is not, it is not it is defaulted because what happens? It will not take some time actually. Fine, click on submit. So one thousand four, we are going to create now. Fine, click on submit. This time you can watch the invoice numbering. So the invoice numbering will be different now. Click on it. So the send pay on the zip is now running. Fine. This is now going to push it into the interface tables of payables, and then automatically, what happens? The import payables invoice will be running now. Fine. Import payables invoice will be automatically triggered. That is running. So you can see that will be running. Fine. Import payables invoice is running. So let us open up one more tab region, and then what happens? Have a look at the invoice. <clears throat> go there. You click on this now. Fine. Go there. Click on it, and then I will now go to the payables now. Then go to the invoice area, and then query for the supplier actually. Click on it. Go to this place. And then go to the manage invoices now, and then query on the supplier actually. Supplier is what G zero one, and then give a tab now. We are going to query on the supplier. Click on search now. He will now show the fourth invoice for fifteen quantities is now combined. You can see the nana is coming, the pack is coming, what happened? The number is coming, and this number also can be automated. I don't know how to do this now. Uh, some students have asked me the third part of this now. How to uh, what happens? This number you can set your own numbers actually. This number can be set. Now, if the packing slip is missing, what happens? The GRN number will be coming over here. We'll now, we'll now make without a packing slip. So we'll now make another result without a packing slip. Now, go to the, go to the result. If you miss the packing slip, then what happens? The GRN number will be coming as an invoice number as such in this place. So click on now and go there. I will now make a result. Click on receive now. So I will now go for what? I will now go for five quantities now. Five quantities. I'm going to go for it now. Sub inventory. I'm putting it now. I'm putting the sub inventory. So sub inventory is FGS, and then click on create result. Now 
If they miss the packing slip number, it will now pick up the GRN number as the invoice number. One, this is only for what? Summary level at packing slip number. Right? If it is a pay site, nothing will be coming. No? It will be having its own logic number. So if this is missing, frankly, you must it now. So it's not done. So now it is not done. You go to this place and then we will now run this. Send the pay on the money orders. They will now re resubmit it. Oh, is it got a, uh, any parameter actually? Send pay on the zip. Oh, yeah, the parameters are not fine. Uh, the, now the GR number is 1005, isn't it? Fine, go that. I will now say send pay on the zip. So what happens? ERS is the one. Now that. Is 1005. <coughs> <coughs> Click on OK. <coughs> Click on something. So this time, what happens? You'll be getting a different one. The GRN number will be forming part of that invoice numbering. So the next topic is what? Debit memo on RTS. No, fine. Go that. Right click on the no, 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 duplicate device. Let it come. So in the mind, what happens? I'll go for the next topic now. Debit memo on RTS actually. So now I go to the procurement now. I click on the procurement and I go to the suppliers now. Let us now open up the supplier actually. And go to the click on it now. And then let me go and then manage suppliers. <coughs> G01. And then click on search now. <coughs> Click on edit now. Go to the purchasing. Here, what happens? Let us say that what happens is supplier is not supplying material. He is a new supplier actually. So whenever you find that what happens, the supplies are not good. Let us say he has not supplied five laptops. And then if one laptop is defective, what happens? We are going to return it back to him. When I return it, what happens? Our liability to him will be reduced actually. Because he is a new supplier. If he's an experienced supplier, if you reduce the liability, what happens? He will not come on show. Fine. If there is a debate, I will come and then repair it here itself. Why you are reducing my payment actually? Fine. So debit memo cannot be just like that created because I have done the debit memo creation and then I got a firing way back, long way, some 20 years back, basically, when I was working in Bombay, basically. So creating a debit memo on returns is not a e is not an easy task, man. Because what happens? You must have a the rapport with the supplier will be getting affected actually. Fine. So, so cautiously do it now. Only for what happens, the new suppliers, you put a tick mark over here now, create debit memo on return. So this facilitates what happens, uh, creating an automatic debit memo on this. Create debit memo from return actually. You go there and then save and close. Now, let me go and then return the product. Now. I'm not going to make a return. So in the meantime, what happens, uh, this monitor process, if it is not completed, no point with that. If it is completed everything, and the import is also completed. So if you go to the manage invoice and then make a recode, you know, I can now see the fifth invoice coming up. Right? There, what happens? We are not given the packing slip number. So the GRN number will be the form for informing part of it. The GRN number is now form on the five dollar invoice. And again, running number also can be this number also can be customized actually. Right? I don't know how to customize it. So if you learn about how to do that, the third part of the invoice, how to do it now, please teach me. And I also want to know it. The third part of the invoice number. So this is the prefix which I have given on the profile, the GRN number, and this one. And if we are giving a packing slip, it will be taking it. If packing slip is missing, it will not taking it. This option is applicable only when the summary level is what packing slip actually. Now, a debit memo I'm going to create. I'm not going to make a return now. Fine, go there. Click on it. So what happens? This is 1005 itself. Let me make a return. Now. Click on that now. Let me make a return. Click on it now. In the 1005, what happens? I'm going to make a return. So return receipts now. I go to this place and then here what happens? Again, the show task receipts. What happens? I click on the return receipts. I'm going to make a return. They're all practically we have seen now. Fine, whether what is so 1005 is the one I will not go and then make a search for it. So, here what happens? You go there, you can, you can now see on the last part. Fine, what happens? The debit memo also will be coming now. Fine, whether it's not coming, fine. Click on return now. Fine, click on return now. Click on select it and then click on return. Now, the last column of this is what the tick mark is. Now, on this particular return, one dollar, I don't want to create a debit memo. In that case, what happens? We have the option of removing it also. Right? Even though the supplier is enabled for debit memo, what happens? On a specific return, you may override it. Right? By removing it, what happens? We are not creating a debit memo. If you don't want, you can do it. Right? So, because debit memo creation will be what happens is spoiling our relationship with the supplier actually. And so, what happens? You must be very cautious upon only for new suppliers, we have to put it on the, on the transaction level also, we have the overriding capability. 
Now I will now create it. <coughs> Click on submit. <coughs> now once when you submit it, there is no need to write run any concurrent at all. <coughs> the send pay on receipt is required only for what happens the receipts now. For a return, the system automatically creates the debit. It will not be required for us to run any concurrent at all. And then, now if you go to the manage invoice and then make a search now, fine. You can now find the debit memo coming up automatically. Fine. Click on search now. 1005 is a GRM on which what happens? We are created it now. Fine. Go there. So we can now see a debit memo on this now. Fine. Go there. So the minus one quantity has come now. On the GRN number, what happens? The running number is coming. This is the debit memo. You can now see this now. The debit memo is coming now. If you click on it, what happens? You can open up. It will not show us a debit memo. So for a debit memo auto creation, what happens? Is no concurrent need to be run at all. It will be coming as such formally. Clear on this now, fine. And there are many more concepts of that, like what happens? Is pay on reserve now. Fine. Uh, pay on use or we are now seeing the pay on reserve now. Fine. Pay on use. The pay on use is an excellent concept now. Fine. The concept says what? Uh, you use and then afterwards you receive him and then you don't have to pay him, make a payment. As soon as you use, you make a payment. Fine. So that type of concept is that, that is again a big topic actually. Fine. So that will all be conducted in the normal training actually. So this completes what happens our overview of procure to pay actually. Fine. Yeah, overview. A glimpse have been given. Fine. There are some more concepts of that. So they will all be explained on this. Any doubts from the other side on the overview of the procure to pay now? Good that right? Now let us now begin the order to cash life cycle. Hello, sir. Yeah, tell me. Sir, one oh, point. Sir, uh, sir uh, you have said about ma mapping sets. Map uh, mapping said, set, of course, yeah. Uh, you said we have to push the uh, uh, transaction to cost management for getting the accounting entry. How okay. we are going to do this? Okay. Yeah, but uh, that is not going to be part of this training actually. Again, what I'm uh, pushing it the costing. Uh, it is not part of this now, fine. So here, what happens? Only a simple P2P as well as a O2C has been explained actually. Okay. Sir. Uh, in in EBS, after taking a receipt and all, we will go for material distribution and see the accounting entry. Is it exactly. such? Right. Can it's not automatic actually, fine. So here, then in EBS, what happens when you perform any material transaction on supply chain? What happens? Accounting is perpetual. Perpetual means what? It is immediate actually. Right? Okay. It doing it immediately. Here it is not so fine. Here we have to push all your supply chain transactions into the costing area and then perform what happens, create the distribution specifically. In costing only, what happens, the distributions are getting created. And then once when the distributions are completed, then what happens, you have to account it also. Okay. So is it is it a batch mode or we can able to schedule a program or on, on such such kind of ways or how it is? Yeah, see, we can even schedule it also, fine. We can even schedule it periodically. And so what happens, the distribution gets created automatically. So what you do is, you can watch my channel, Anantanana, YouTube channel, Anantanana. Yes, there, sir. what happens, I have posted the videos on this accounting part, the costing part actually. And okay. there are very many ways of costing, not, not only one thing. Fine, there are so many ways of costing actually. You can refer my videos. Some of the videos will be explaining you. There's what happens, they're all promotional videos actually. So those promotional videos will be explaining about the costing part actually. And fully it's explained. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Because this training is only for a, what happens, a P2P a overview as well as a O2C overview. So, okay, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. I normally conduct this training for about a five days time. So, uh, four or five days approximately. And during the time, what happens, it will all be fully explained. Now, let us now jump into O2C now. Thank you. <clears throat> So uh, what to see, I'm going to see. We will now begin the what to see. <clears throat> if you go back in the, on this one, and go, there, go to the Fusion Order Management. You go there, go to the Fusion OM Worksheet. So we are beginning with the Fusion OM Worksheet. So we are going to begin this. So Fusion OM Worksheet is there. And many topics are already done, and so what happens will be rushing through. Fine. So the first one is done, rules are done, fine. Those are, is all done now. Fine. The financial setups is now fully done now. We already done the financial setups now. Eight, nine, ten. We have completed all these things now. So we go there, go for them now. Fine. Business unit is already created now. Yes. Business unit is created. And then here, what happens? You have to have your own RDS now. Fine. If you are going to have an RDS of what your common set, what happens? It will not be working. And especially on the what happens? These portions we are doing. 
customer account relationship as well as what happens a customer account site must have your own audience as well as what happens a, the pricing rules and then what happens the, these many receivables ones must have your own audience actually. If you don't have it, what happens? It will not be working properly. You go down now. And now what happens? You go there. In the human capital management, what happens? This is not actually required. Actually, man, you already created a job, a department and the position is also created and shown to you. Man. And then manage users, we already created a user. A legal user has been created actually. They have now assigned the roles. So this many roles have to be assigned now. Fine, that. So what I did is I have already assigned all the roles. The roles are already assigned now. So if you see on the order management, what happens? You'll be having a global order promising administrator, and then order administrator, order entry specialist, and order manager, and then the shipping, and then what happens? We have a supply chain orchestration on which what happens? There are five roles in there. There are five roles in there. Supply chain application orchestration, all the five roles are coming, and then what happens for which the data access also has to be given. The data access also has to be given. I've already added all these roles into my user actually. The receiving agent is already added now here itself. Arrows manager is also added. The procurement manager is for purchasing actually. And accounts payables manager, specialist and supervisor have already added. And then because of which only we have just completed the payables part of it now. And then supply manager is also added. And the production supervisor for manufacturing, we are not going to touch this part of this training actually. And then these two are for basically manufacturing. In my order management training, what happens? I will be showing you yeah, what happens. B2B make of which what happens. These two roles are required now. And then this is an order orchestration error recovery manager. When there is an error, what happens? It will be, uh, it will be restart the DOO. So we have a concept of a DOO, right? distributed order orchestration, on which what happens? Done. And then general accounting and general accounting manager is there. So this many roles have already been added. No, fine. Yesterday itself, I added all these roles. So what happens? We won't be spending so much of our time on this. No, fine. So roles are already added. I will just show you about how the roles are visible. No, I will not go there. Click on done. No, I will not go to the security console. I will just show it to you because I already added everything. So what happens? No need to. What happens? Very important. So click on more now, <coughs> and then we'll go to the security console. So let us now watch. Have a look at it quickly now. I go to the users area. I go to the users area, and then query your G01 now. G01 is entering now. So open it up. So here, what happens? You can now see. Many many roles are there. Right? Accounts payables, all the roles are there. Employee roles, and then these are all the common roles which you have to use for what happens. The vision instance actually. Yesterday itself I told you general account, general account manager, global order form administrator. And then afterwards what happens? You can also go here. Order administrator, order entry specialist, order manager. All these things are already there. Order orchestration specialist and everything, pricing administrator, everything is there. So each and everything is now completely on this. So all of the things are already available. And then I have given the data access also to the appropriate ones, and so what happens? No need to do those things. So we'll not waste those times on this one. And then afterwards, what happens? You go there. You know this. This is the one. I'll not close this one. I already explained the link. Go there. So this is also what happens. I'll not close it now. And here, there. This one now. This part now. Inventory is about. So here, what happens? I have already created the inventory all and the facility sheets, and then all these things are already created in my training of my the location organization tag is a very important one as far as fusion is concerned. We have done it. We have created a sub inventory. One is a FGS and then one is a stage. No, fine, whether there's no done. Manage carriers. We have already created a carrier also. In the transit times, fine. The carriers and transit times play a vital role whenever you are using a transfer order route. No, fine. When you want to transfer a material from one north to other or what happens, it will be coming in the picture. So that is not part of this training. We're not doing it now. And the inter, inter organization parameters will go there. This is for this no, fine. Again, we are not touching this part now. So I have given the what happens the data access for everything you know, So the categories and catalogs, what happens? Every functional area must have a catalog actually. Like what happens? The inventory must have a catalog. The purchasing must have a catalog. And then the order entry must have a catalog. So everything is not done. Item statuses we already explained. Life cycle phases, transaction phases, all these things are already explained to you. So item creation, I have done it. And then what happens? I go there and then do it now. And this is also done now. And then afterwards, the basic order management begins now. Again, here, what happens? Uh, there's a change actually. Fine, I'm not touching this part again. Fine, there's a change, and so what happens? That will be explained in the full training actually. Fine, so I'm not going to do this now. Fine, so create an infinite supply for this. Now, fine, I will not bypass these steps and then I will not do it in a different manner. Fine, the steps are now what happens? Uh, these are all outdated actually. Fine, I will not bypass it. So, here, what happens? You go there, and then here, I click on it. I will not go to what your supply planning, supply chain planning. Now, fine, I will not. So this is the supply chain execution now. I, go there. I will not go to the supply chain planning. And then here, what happens? I go to the plan inputs on this. 
I click on the plan inputs. In the supply chain planning, what happens? I go to the plan inputs. <clears throat> so here, what happens? I click on it now and click on this cursor. And then here, what happens? You go to the planning, manage planning source systems is the one. It's called manage planning source systems. No? I click on the manage planning source systems. So the task name is manage planning source systems. And now here, what happens? There are multiple systems which can be coupled. And then here, what happens? We have an OPS. No? So we have to choose the OPS on this now. Go down and then choose the OPS. No? This is the one. So OPS is the one which is now on the basic system of mine where we are, we are having an order orchestration actually. If I click on it. And then here, you click on the manage organization list now. I click on the manage organization list. And then click on the refresh list now. When refresh it. And then now what happens? You query your organization. G011. And then click on search. So here, what happens? You can now see the child are coming now. I will now go on and make a search now. I will now make it as what? G01. And then not the one. I click on search. What happens? You know, both dogs coming up. So this will be coming only when you run one concurrent now. Fine, brother. It's not coming actually. Fine, brother. I will not show you what you have to do for bringing the organization on your managed planning source system. So fine, because somebody has already run now, so it's not coming. Fine, brother. So when you are working on the first instance, what happens? You have to run this concurrent. So here, what happens? You go there, go to the planning, <coughs> supply chain planning. You go to the plan inputs now. Fine, click on the plan inputs, and then here you click on it. And then here, what happens? You go there. You go to collect planning data. So you have to run the collect planning data because it's a uh, you, uh, what happens? A global instance. Somebody made it on it. You go there and then drop it down and then make it as OPS. Now. And then here, what happens? You make it as a targeted run. Now. And then this is only for the org. <clears throat> you go there and then you run for the org actually. Organization. In the organization, what happens? You run it and then click on submit. Now, now all the organizations will be collected upon submitting. Now. And once you submit it, what happens? All the organizations will be collected. So this is the first one. So somebody has already run it because what happens? People are frequently running on it now. Fine, brother. So because of which, what happens in this place? You are now getting this. One. So if you go go there and then here in this place, what happens? If you go there in this place, you are getting this one. Now you have to once when the org comes over here after you run the concurrent. I am not submitting it basically here. I am not submitting it now because what happens? There is no requirement. Somebody has already submitted. So once when the org comes over here, what happens? You have to enable it for collections actually. Enable it for then save and close. Fine. So the next step only will be coming after a refresh sheet and then what happens after you collect a refresh sheet will be coming. So click on save and close by which what happens these two orgs are now enabled for collection. Now what you have to do is you go there and then in this place what happens you are done now. And then what happens I have only one item over here now and go there. Item starts with what is a G01 is now going to start and then click on search. I am now searching for the item now and it is not available. Now what happens after the org is collected and then it is enabled for collections, you go there and then again run it. Click on collect planning data. We are going to run it again. So this we are collecting it now. So collect planning data is the one. Why is coming in this one? So uh, okay, you can in another 10 15 minutes, it will be over now. Maybe 620 I'll be completing it. So click on collect planning data. Why is coming in this? Come on. Huh. Oh, there. So click on collect planning data. Ah, it's not coming. Now you go there, and then what happens? You put the OPS. Now I have to what collect so many things basically. Items I have to first of all collect. Now I go there, click on items and collect. Go there. Let me collect the items on the reference data part. So in this place, what happens? I'm going to collect it. And then on the supply planning data, I have to collect the on and also. You go there and then collect. The supply one on and on. So if you're using what the reservations, the sales orders, the transfer orders, the work orders, everything, what happens, they also have to be done. So the supply planning data is a basically a dynamic data, and then this is a static data actually. The reference data is a static data. So now items has to be collected as well as this thing is a targeted one, and then only the few things are only going to be collected. Right? Was it targeted? Because I have no target means what all the items will be basically collected on the free concept. So put the appropriate one on the demand and supply basically on the on the static and dynamic and this is the static data, the dynamic data. And then click on submit. So what happens? On and has been brought over here now. I click on submit. Now this will be brought for sales orders actually. If I click on submit now, I which what happens? Everything will be done. If I click on submit now. So it's a big concurrent, it will be running for certain time now. So it'll be running. And then afterwards, what happens? Once when you make a search on this current one, what happens? Your item will be appearing on the search. Once when the concurrence are completed to search, 
your item will be collected and then it will be ready for use actually go there so this is on this now fine i'm not following these steps actually fine now costing is also not considered on this now procurement setups what happens we are already completed everything we complete everything and then now again what happens we come to this place now fine i will not this can be done only after we what happens do a collection actually now let us now go on and create our customer actually so we can now go to the task and then let us now create the customer actually let us now create go there okay fine the planning process is not like we also planning process go there we will not get the customer we click on cancel now <clears throat> and then we will now create a customer for the stream click on cancel now ah it is not coming and go there click on it we go there and then click on the setup and maintenance and then i will now create a customer actually so click on the song and go there and then we will now go to search now and then what happens i will now paste this create customer i am now going to create a customer now and click on it now so we will be creating a customer on this now click on create customer so here i will now say what happens it's a g01 underscore cust fine uh, means everything is coming in caps now g01 underscore cust Underscore one. It's first customer and creating in the final. So the system automatically creates a zero point go there as well as, and then we go there, and then if you want, you can even give a point like make the account type as external. Make it external. So customer class, if you go and then drop it down, what happens? You can even make it as what federal class or something like that. Go there, make it up. So later on, what happens? You can even take a report on this now. If you have a dance number or anything, you can do it now and go there. Click on it now. There, what happens? You go there. Address it. What happens? You put your what happens? The reference data is not. RDS, you put your reference. So I'm not going to put my reference as an account address set actually. I'm going to drop it down. Go there. Click on search now. So I will not choose G. And then click on search now. I'm putting my reference data set. I'm going to G zero one D GDS RDS. So go there. And then here I will now give a site name also. I will now say what happens? G zero one site. And then here, what happens? I will now put the postal code over here. Now, one zero zero two zero, and then give a tag. The postal code one zero zero two zero. Click on search. He bekar search hai. Wahan par nahi aa raha sida. But they claim that this is an excellent search actually. In the address line, what happens? You go there. G zero one, and then address one. I am putting an address one. So I am now completing the addresses on this now. Fine, brother. Yours. Everything is now completed. And then, if you have a sales tax code, then you can do it. Now, fine, go there. This is the address of this particular site, actually. And then go down. And then here, address purposes, I am going to add. Click on plus now, and then I am adding the address purposes now. And then here, what happens? I will now say what is the purpose. I will now say it's a build to now. First, first one is a build to. I make it as a build to. And then we will now have one more site. Fine, click on plus now. Fine, we will now have one more address as well. So go there. Now, this I will now make it as a purpose as ship to now. Fine, make it as a ship. And then you'll be having multiple such purposes over here, no? Fine. From order management perspective, you know. And then this is the address of this. I will now say, drop it down. This address will be coming up over here, no? Fine. And that's it. Fine. This completes the basic customer creation, actually. Go down. Fine. It's all done now. Fine. Click on save and close now. By which order? The customer is now created for our RDS, actually. Fine. Save and close now. So the basic customer creation is now complete. So once when you give a save and close, what happens? It goes to manage customers automatically. From a create customer, what happens? It will go to the manage customers. If it doesn't come, what happens? You have to run the concur, run the task called manage customers. If it is not coming, you run the task manage customers will be running. So query your G zero one now. Find G zero one and then click on search now. Find the query. So once when you query it, what happens? You keep your cursor on the appropriate customer now. My customer is here now. Find go there as well. And then here, what happens? We have to set up the accounts as well as site information specifically. So choose your customer over here. And then on the account side, what happens? There is a uh, thing uh, underscore. Fine. Click on this now. Fine. Account number. I am clicking on it. So you click on the bottom of the account number. <clears throat> so go there. Click on this now, and it opens up. I think. In the payment details, if you have a payment details of the customer, you can do it now. Fine. You click on the communication. Fine. I am not setting up anything because it's the AR activity, so I am not setting up anything. So click on the communication. In the communication part, what happens? I am going to add a person for a contact actually. Click on the edit contact on the communication. Uh, click on edit contacts here what happens i'm going to add a contact name basically fine go there as so go there and then this place what happens you give a plus now fine plus <clears throat> and then let me add a contact person's name now fine go there i will not put my name over here now fine ananta and the last name is nana go 
ஷிப்பிங் <laughs> so he does the shipping now and go there and then where is the address of him i get on plus no fine you can even pop the address of him i get on plus no and then i will not say what happens uh, uh, what happens is that what happens is that contact address no fine at this one i am putting the uh, site address name as a contact no fine address is what again contact address 2 fine like this city is not new york your time no <clears throat> and then county and here city is new on click on search now fine the long coming fine new york new york i'm selecting it now fine whether it will be populating the remaining fields of this now fine that the state is now what the pin code is also what happens 1020 and it will be again asking you something and what is what is and then what is the purpose of this address fine click on plus now fine this address what are the things to be done fine drop it off i will also ship to Whatever, whatever is applicable for abans you put it now and i'm putting a shift to this so click on okay by which what happens the address is also made so this contact has got a responsibility of ship to and then these are all this is the address of this contact the contact resides in this place basically so give a save now give a save so then after we'll save and close so we are now create a contact with the purpose what he exactly he is doing and then where exactly the site is residing at Click on save and close. By which what happens? It is no come. So in the communication part, what we have done is what we have now created a contact. In the relationships, what happens? It is for CRM actually. The CRM module will be basically doing the relationship. If one customer goes away, bargain, right? then what happens? Whom who we have to catch? Fine, we have to catch the related 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 customer now. Right? So it is a CRM activity. Fine, they will be doing the customer relationship basically. Right? <clears throat> the CRM relationship. Right? It's a got a TCA architecture. the trading community architecture will be definitely it right? they will be doing it and then click on the profile history in the profile history what happens you go to modify certain things right? click on the profile history go there and then here what happens you go there and see this no fine the profile so here what happens i will now remove this what happens the credit check and all fine because we are not going to do anything on this training and all fine what whatever one i will not correct the record so actions and then correct the record so let me remove the credit check actually fine you go to credit check there is not there will be then no, the full fledged training only so many activities are there just now so go there and then what happens it is okay allow uh, discount allow this is a credit check has been removed on the main one now fine the payment terms and then the payment terms if you see the 2 by 10 net 30 has got what your reference data set already attached so you the payment terms of this now fine so that payment term whichever you are having the reference data set that you attach it so what happens they will be defaulting on your sales orders actually in order so we keep it as now fine the remaining you know about how to do this now fine so it's all taught in your ar training actually so this much i'm doing it on this now and so click on what happens say the profile class is default time same and close so by which what happens you know giving a warning the account cannot be cannot uh, receive email statements is okay fine that's that's okay i have not said it fully actually so now what happens at the account level we are set now at the site level we have to go on the site so click on the site level bottom site level i have set on so here what happens we go there and then in site level what happens here again the site details are coming up now fine whatever is address everything whatever you given is now coming up now fine there are two site details okay and then afterwards what happens you go to the payment details click on the payment details in the payment details again what happens how he is going to make a payment that he can do it in the communication what happens i am not creating an address actually any person basically is already kind of the, the uh, customer level itself you go to the profile history in the profile history what happens you create a site profile it will now copy from the header level and click on the create site profile it will be copying from the header level and then what happens it will be creating the site profile over here everything is now copy and whatever you are given all these things are come over here now and credit hold is not there the credit check is also not there and the two by ten at 30 is also coming and everything has been taken up from the customer level so after having done this what happens if you want to have a credit limit what happens that will be discussed only in a, in a good in a detailed training actually give a save and close by which what happened that site level profiles are now created actually give a warning is okay
and then what happens is for the taxation area. So this completes a skeleton creation of a customer actually. G01 underscore cust underscore one is now created. And click on save and close down. So after this is done, what happens is you go there, click on save and close it, click on this one. So it's not done. Now after having done this, what happens? We go there. You go to this place and then query your item. Okay? By this time, the collection program would have been completed. And click on search now. So once when you search for it, what happens? You now see the item is what G01. G01. And click on search. We have got only one item. It has to come. And I don't know why it's not coming actually. Oh, the catalog. And here, what happens? This field has become a mandatory one now. Okay? What is? Uh, I will now say eight zero two order entry. And then click on search now. Catalog is coming. So it is because what happens is the catalog is not there in the item now. Right? Maybe item may be having another catalog for the order entry now. So that has to be given now. I don't know which one. I'm not sure about the INB items. I will not put one and make a search. I will not give a blank. So it's not coming actually because of this catalog basically. Otherwise, it will be only coming actually. Because here yeah, there is no null field at all. There is no null field at all. Ah, now it's coming. See? When I give all the catalogs, it's coming. So I have to identify my catalog actually uh, because when I make a search on this, domain, I go there. When I give G on B, when I give a G on the purchase on the INB dot items is coming. And G, we will have to search for it. I don't know which catalog has been belonged to this. Domain. Let us not try to make a small R and D. This domain. I go there. I will now go to the product. I go there. Click on the setup. I will now go to the product management and then try to see the catalog. And then there will be some catalogs. We will not try to query on the catalog. I will now go to the product management. <clears throat> so, product management is there. And here it is there. And click on the product management and then go to the product information management. And then I will now go to the manage items and then make a search for it. Now, I click on this manage items. Those are the browse items. Don't go to the manage items. Go to the browse items and then make a check. Now, find browse items is what? G01. And then click on search now. This so let us open up the master item. Open up. And then here I will now go on and see the categories basically. Open it up now. Click on it. So let me open it up now. So we'll now see the categories directly. Go to the categories now. And we'll not try to search on all the categories actually. So it has got so many categories actually. So the order entry is basically a category on this now. We will not try to because we got only this brief and this we are we are trying the, only the catalog only we tried now and INV dot items we tried right? product reporting we will not see the product reporting catalog only is showing the product reporting and then uh, click on search now <clears throat> it's not coming so we'll not go there and see no so product reporting INV dot items purchasing will now go on and see now click on the purchasing area. Okay, anything else is enough. I click on search now. So, since it's the vision instance, there are plenty of items. If you give a blank search, it will be very difficult. Then the planning catalog, and then the only one which is missing. I will not put the planning catalog. They should have given a blank one. I don't know why it's so. So, planning catalog. And click on search. They're all bugs basically. If you give a blank, and then here I give an item, it will be easy for us to search, isn't it? And if I remove it, what happens? It shows you everything on the INB dot items. And the INB dot items is not showing you anything. But how to search my G? Okay. It's a very, very difficult task. You don't know. Drag it, drag it, keep on dragging it till you retire. Then only what happens, G will be coming. Oh, God. Okay. So, what happens if you have been come? Now, what you have to do is you have now created a customer. Now. So, what happens? The customer has to be collected, actually. So, what you do is you go there instead of collecting one by one. What happens? You go there, go to the collect planning data, and then collect everything in one watch. You make it as OPS, and then bring everything over here. Now, right? bring it over here. Everything is now brought over here. In the supply terminals, also, what happens? You bring everything over here now, and then run the concurrent actually. So, as and when you create any static data and any dynamic data, what you have to do is you have to go on the concurrent. The static data is going to be whatever you have to do, you have to collect it. Then only what happens, it will be eligible in the order management for your processing business. Click on something now. So I'm not selecting everything on a net change. Okay? I will not give it, I will not make it as a so targeted now. Okay? Targeted. And click on something now. It will take around 10 to 15 minutes approximately. And then afterwards it will be done. So we are in the process of what? Uh, 
uh, what happened? The seventy seventh will be doing it a bit later now. Kind of way. Now we have to start tomorrow at seventy eighth step actually. The administrative profile value is almost that is will not begin now. Seventy eighth step onwards will not begin tomorrow. Any doubts from the other side? Till now everything is clear, no? <clears throat> Sir, tell sir. me. Uh, sir, in, in, in basically in order management, uh, ah. uh, you will you will have the flow like uh, you will start from sales order, release sales order, then transaction order, ship confirm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same way it is going on fusion or it will be different. Yeah, yeah, it's almost similar. Fine, fine. It will be almost similar. We'll be having a look at it tomorrow. Okay, sir. So in regarding setup parts, we will do shipping parameters and all. And here it will be like here yeah, also is the same thing. No? Fine. Whatever we have in EBIS, as far as shipping is concerned, everything is same now. Fine. So those parts will be discussed tomorrow. Okay. Sir. Okay. Sir. That is what we are thinking. Okay. And this these few things like collecting plant data and sourcing systems are new. Yeah, they are all unnecessary burden here actually. So they have added these things. So we don't have any other go. So we have to live with that now. Actually. So, so the purpose of this is what's going to be requirement in EB is basically like collecting the data. And here, what about the collection? Data collection has been made mandatory over here. Is it related to the planning or it is related to order management? Or? It's the uh, planning come order management actually, fine. Because certain parts we have to collect and then only do it now, right? And planning, of course, naturally you have to collect it. Okay. So, so order management also needs certain collections actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens in every version, they are now modifying it actually. Uh, well, let us hope that what I mean, the correction will be dropped very soon. Okay, so for the purpose of doing the cycle, we are making this setup. Other than this, there is no use on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, only when you connect it, we can put the item on the sales order. Otherwise, what happens is not possible. Okay, so okay. It is like item validation organization, which we give on profile option. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Fine. Almost like that. Uh, something similar to the picture. Okay, sir. Thank you. So we'll now meet tomorrow and then we'll now continue our 78th step on the order management part. Okay. So I'll now stop the recording.